homered in three straight games. Joe. And four of the last six, Tom, leading all players this postseason with those four home runs. And here is the left-hander, Blake Snell, on this warm Wednesday afternoon here in San Diego. And the question for San Diego, John, which Blake Snell are they going to get? Two games this postseason. Beat the Dodgers game three of the division series, a run over five and a third, but then it can go the other way as well, like in the wild card round when he walked six and didn't make it through four. Yeah, it's all about the matchup that he's facing. Aggressive team for the Philadelphia Phillies. That might feed into the success rate of Blake Snell. He doesn't throw a lot of strikes. One of the lowest strike thrower as far as pitchers come in the big, in the big leagues. And I'm so interested. The number two and the number three are going to be a theme today. Can he throw a strike in one of the first two pitches, and can he get three pitch or less outs? The reason I say that, he'll be in the game longer. It will increase the chances for the San Diego Padres to win. It comes down, are the Phillies aggressive, or are they, are they going to be a patient team? Yeah, as the Padres try to even this series at a game of peace, let's see the lineup that he'll face off with. You know, Kyle Schwarber leads off that, that monster home run in game one. Harper went deep as well. Castellanos out of the five spot. Interesting matchup to watch there. One of the more aggressive guys in baseball. Alec Baum bat six, starts at third base. Then Gene Segura. And a change at the bottom of the lineup. This is the first left-hander that the Phillies have seen since game one of the division series. And so the first start since then for Matt Veerling and Edmundo Sosa. The biggest thing to look for tonight, or today, is the fact that Blake Snell has dominating stuff. Does he drift in his mechanics and maybe even mentally at times that gets him out of the strike zone? And what I mean by that is he has such great arm action on his delivery. But if he's drifting to home and his arm doesn't catch up, he throws a lot of balls. If he's throwing strikes enough with his fastball, his slider curveball combination is as good as anybody's. So watch that arm action and his landing foot, and if they're connected, It'll be a tough day for the Phillies. Day. How about this day, huh? 91 degrees. The ball may fly a little bit better today. Kind of a throwback feel to this game with a championship series game during the daytime. And here is Kyle Schwarber to lead off his latest iconic home run. Longest home run in this ballpark's history, the 10th of his postseason career. He's going to want to hit a fastball away off of Snell. That's his best chance. Anything that's spinning, he'll swing over the top. If he gets a fastball away, he could leave it in left field. 2 nothing Phillies in game one. Off we go in game two, and he got a fastball over the plate, skied it into shallow center field. Kim is out. Hassan Kim gives way to Grisham. And in this bright sunshine, that's another thing to check on today. Can these guys spot those things way up there? So Grisham from center field takes command on that first play. Here is the defense. He's flanked by Profar and Soto. It's a good defensive outfield. It's a better defensive infield when you look at the left side. Manny Machado and Hassan Kim, both fantastic. Jake Cronenworth, an awesome play in the first inning of yesterday's game. Robbie Bryce Harper of a base hit. And Nola does the catching for snap. Glove side command. That means inside to a right-hander. That's where Snell wants to live. He wants that slider to get to the back foot. If he establishes enough fastballs in there, the right-handers will have trouble. Reese Hoskins. One ball, no strikes. And he needs that pitch. Both pitchers need that pitch. The difference between the pitchers are, imagine a table standing at home plate. Snell wants the ball vertical going up and down. He wants the ball to fall off the table on his slider so they swing and miss. Whereas Nola, east and west, he's going to pitch in and out and have the breaking ball in a different shape, breaking to the hitters. So it's really two different ways to get the job done. But when Snell is right, that ball goes vertical down, and nobody throws a better slider down and in than he does when he's connected. His 2-0. Is golfed into shallow center field again. Another test in that sunshine. Grisham didn't see it at first. Now does. Two gone in this first inning. Pretty sunny day down there, huh, Tom Verducci? Uh, yeah, you know what? It's the kind of a day the Chamber of Commerce loves, <laughs> what infielders and outfielders hate. It's called a high sky, Joe. There's not a cloud anywhere in the sky. And I was talking to Ryan Christensen, the Padres bench coach before the game. He agreed it's the worst possible sky on fly balls and pop-ups. And he said he will tell his team, run out every pop-up. Other than that, it's a great day to be a pitcher. Uh, yeah. The only bad part is, uh, is the ball will jump a little bit more today. I mean, I think it's all bad parts for the yeah. pitchers today, right? <laughs> ball one on JT Real Muto. So that's getting a nice little tan out of it. 
Taking in a beautiful day at the park. Conditions right for some offense. In a series that has not seen any. Rio Muto serves one into center. Grisham lays out in a hat trick in the first inning for Trent Grisham. A couple easy pops and then a diving play and a 1 2 3 first for Blake Snell. Padres coming to bat for the first time here in game two of the championship series. And here is their lineup. The one guy that got a hit yesterday and Will Myers is out of there. Brandon Jury instead in the lineup is Bob Melvin tries to catch lightning in a bottle. Jury had 28 home runs during the regular season, so he's at first base. Josh Bell DHs, then Kim Grisham and Noel around it out. But of course, two and three, the big guys in that lineup trying to get them going. Against Aaron Nola, who, I mean, he had a great regular season, John, but the postseason seems to have brought out another gear in this game. Yeah, no doubt. He's elite level, and really the theme of today's game is who can shock the other person's system, meaning he hadn't given up a run. So if they get some runs early, does that get him a little bit off his game or vice versa against Blake Snell? So Padres have been a very, very disciplined team, but they're going to face the second straight pitcher that throws strikes, and a lot of them. And we'll see how the Padres adjust. I talked about the East and West. He throws a low three-quarter, good sinker, good cutter, great changeup, good curveball. Other than that, I don't know. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, right. <laughs> Both pitchers on their game makes it hard for hitters to get going. Aaron Nola, not just in October, not giving up any runs, but it goes back even before that. He's put up zeros in 33 of his last 34 innings. His first one to Jerickson so far is popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Rio Muto is going to watch that thing become a souvenir. Well, first inning for Blake Snell, great sign. Three batters had three pitches or less to get out. So you could tell that the hitters want to try to get on the fastball right away. That's a good sign for the pitchers if they make quality pitches. It's one thing to hunt for strikes, but the corners and the real good pitches are still out in the strike zone. Padre offense just one hit yesterday. As John touched on off of the top of the show, they've scored in just one of their last 21 innings. That five run seventh. Game four against the Dodgers on Saturday. Oh. Got the call on that curve, and it's 0 and 2. Pitch has been almost unhittable this postseason. Opponents two for 20 against it. As Nola dominated the Cardinals in his postseason debut, and then just one unearned run against the Braves on Friday night. His 0 2 to Profar is inside. Well, when you're connected as a pitcher mechanically, it's a lot more fun to pitch. Just like when you're connected as a hitter mechanically, it's, it's much more fun to hit. When you're going good at the plate, you feel like everything slows down and the ball's bigger. Got him, and a strikeout opens Nola's day. And this is what he can do. He can take both sides of the plate and eliminate it for the pit for the hitter. There's a comeback or sinker. He can throw arm side four seamers away. And we saw what Wheeler did yesterday. A high percentage of four seam fastballs. I think you're going to see similar stuff out of Nola. But Nola has the ability to spin the ball a little bit more often than Wheeler did. Wheeler just outpowered the entire San Diego Padre lineup. John is Juan Soto, one of those guys you could see change his philosophy, be a little more aggressive. Yeah, maybe not here, but definitely after this at bat. He's had success, oh. and the success he's had against Nola has been aggressive early. We saw a real patient Soto yesterday. It didn't work out well. First at bat, he always checks out the pitcher, but lots for him to be a little more aggressive early in the count. One ball, one strike. Went 0 for 3 with a couple K's yesterday, and in this postseason, he's hitting just 226 with one extra base hit. Has continued to reach base because of the walks, but not any thump in there. No huge impact yet. And a 1 1 pitch. Takes ball two. It's the ultimate respect for him and Machado and how the pitchers alter the way they pitch against these two versus the rest of the Padres. It's actually more a little fearless against the rest of the Padres, and you've got to be a little extra careful against these two guys who can leave the yard. They went 0 for 7 together yesterday did Soto and Machado. And if the Padres are going to keep on playing, keep this dream season going, 2 and 3, Soto and Machado got to hit like superstars. Yeah, it's 3 1 pitch. Normally in the regular season, you probably get 60% fastball here. It's not a guarantee in the postseason. So lock in on an area and let the bat go if you're Soto and you get it in that spot. On 3 1, Soto pulls it on the ground to Gene Segura. Two up. 
two down. Now the Phillies defense, the bad part of it, reared its ugly head in the ninth inning last night. They were able to escape even with that ninth inning air. Beerling's in center field instead of Brandon Marsh with the left-hander on the mound. Schwarber and Castellanos down the corners. Bohm is at third. Edmundo Sosa starts it short. Very good defensively there. He came over from the Cardinals at the trade deadline. Segura and Hoskins right side. JT Real Muto, per usual, doing the catching. Andy Machado, one for 13, but some of those at bats were really good outs. You know, hard hit outs that just were at people. Machado's looking to take that inner half of the plate and really get that low, long, bat in the zone type swing. Gap power. And he's one of those guys. He goes, they go. And the wins in the postseason, he's hitting 368. After he went 0 for 4 last night, he's now 1 for 12 in the three losses. Up there in the first inning of a scoreless game, he chops one along third foul. Well, it's certainly not a fair narrative, but they know that if they don't do their part and be superhuman, it's going to be hard for the San Diego Padres to collectively put up a bunch of runs, but they can't come out of themselves to do that. It's one game, and that's what you got to remind yourself. The narratives change every game in a postseason, and one big hit changes the narrative, and that's what they're looking to do today. The 1 1 to Machado. 1 and 2. Nola in his eighth major league season, getting his first chance in the postseason. And along with Zach Wheeler, has made up a dynamite one and two at the top of this rotation. The rotation for the Phillies over the first seven games of this postseason has a 117 ERA. Now, you're not supposed to, as the last team into the field, be able to line up your pitching like this, but. Six of the eight games, Nola or Wheeler. It's pretty amazing. I mean, everything had to go right, and it did for them to be to this point. That's a bat down the line, and a fair ball from Machado. Sosa, the shortstop, over to get it. His third to second is not in time. Got his hand back in. He's got a two-out double. Great slide by Machado on a ball that the shortstop goes out because it hits that little insert right there. That's why you got to be moving on every play. You never know what the carom's going to be. Makes a great effort. And watch the slide. Just gets around, holds on. And another good swing that resulted in an, a hit this time. Only the second hit against Nola. How many times in this series will we see a team get two consecutive hits? It was hard to come by yesterday. It didn't happen. Yeah. It may be hard to come by in general against some of these studs. So yesterday, four hits between the two teams combined. That's tied for the fewest in a postseason game ever. And another couple of good pitchers today in Nola and Snell. Two-out chance for the Padres. Belongs to Jay Cronenworth. Came through in a clutch spot in the clinching game against the Dodgers. The go-ahead single in that five-run inning. Well, the harder you throw it, doesn't really mess up Cronenworth. The inside part of the plate does, however. That's where he goes, but misses. And he's been pretty good on 95 plus miles per hour because he's got relatively a short compact swing, but where he gives up, and every hitter's got to give something up for their strength to be exercised, he does give up the inner part of the plate. So we'll see late if Nola can run that two-seamer in there when he needs a crucial out with two strikes. On a 1 0, Cronenworth takes inside for ball two. Jake Cronenworth out of the middle of nowhere to become a two time All Star in his first three seasons in the majors. It was kind of a throw in the Tommy Pham trade a few years ago. Former seventh round pick of the Tampa Bay Rays, was a two way guy in the minors. It has emerged for the Padres in a big way, key component of this lineup. Chance to put him in front. Takes a breaker for a strike. Now, much like we saw Darvish could get back in the count anytime he wants with off speed. That's kind of what Nolan Nola can do as well. So really good breaking ball pops out of his hand. Looks like a ball and comes down in the strike zone. A ball up and away 
Cronenworth will go the other way. He's not a dead pole hitter. On a 2 1. Back to back. Oh. 2 and 2. Perfectly executed. Backdoor curveball. See if they go inside with two strikes. Nola fires. Cronenworth watches ball three wrapped around the plate. And the count goes full. Padres didn't put a man in the scoring position until the ninth inning last night. They've got a chance here in the first. Strike three, bullseye with a fastball from Nola. Begins with the first matchup between Blake Snell and Bryce Harper. Since that, in a lot of ways, season altering moment, June 25th in this ballpark that Tom Berducci detailed when Blake Snell hit Harper, broke his thumb. Harper missed more than two months and just was not the same once he came back in the regular season. It takes a rip at a first pitch fastball from Snell and comes up empty. He certainly has figured it out as they've gotten into the postseason, though. Harper's homered in three consecutive games and four in his last six. Uh, the Phillies sure are coming out swinging. They took ten, the first ten pitches against Darvish in the first inning yesterday. And they've swung it over half the pitches that Snell has thrown. So you know the scouting report. And I'm always intrigued on whether teams can adjust or they are just what they are. And the Phillies are an aggressive team. On this 1 1 pitch, Harper watches ball two. And for Blake Snell, he averages 18 pitches per inning. That's as much as anybody in baseball. He only needed six pitches taking advantage of that aggressiveness in the first. Yeah, good job by Nola there. He pointed to his shoulder. That was the drifting I was talking about. He went downhill too fast. Arm can't catch up. Misses wide. Three and one. But he's so good at when he's connected. I mean, this is what the Snell we saw against the Dodgers in the World Series when he was just punching out everybody. And then there's times where he's not connected. And I really think that front shoulder sometimes ducks and his body starts leaning towards home. And you're asking that really arms to catch up at the last minute. Harper goes around. Full count. The last ball on that will be every pitcher as we watch the replay of Harper swing and every pitcher has to hang over the rubber They got to be centered over the rubber to deliver the ball downhill And sometimes he doesn't wait there just a second enough to get that arm and ball To be connected to the strike zone Harper leads off the second fouls it off and will do it again So as many pitches in this at bat to Bryce Harper as he needed for the first inning total this is kind of the Blake Snell experience. A lot of full counts, a lot of strikeouts, a lot of walks. Can be dominant. He can be maddening. Padres need him to be the former today. Breaking pitch. Sliced up the middle. Over Kim and into center field. Harper with a leadoff single here in the second. See how aggressive Harper gets early and even on pitches up, but then he's able to stay on this breaking ball 3-2 breaking ball and he doesn't Laser it, but he gets enough of it right at the end of the bat to get it over the shortstop Kim And those are the kind of hits we saw Philadelphia just bludgeoning The Atlanta Braves right not a lot of home runs up until that last game So they got to Philly, but they just found ways to get hits yeah, they only had one home run over the first four games of the postseason. This has been just the last few games they've been hitting for power. They're winning games with some small balls, sustained rallies in the wild card round, first couple games against Atlanta. Castellanos. <laughs> so you were saying earlier that there are some guys, and it seems like he falls into that bucket. You could walk up to him and say, you are not allowed to swing. Do not swing. 
and they can't help themselves. Yeah, it's amazing. I use this analogy. It's, it's not something you can do, but imagine if you went up there against a pitcher who has some trouble throwing strikes and didn't have a bat in your hand. That pitcher still might not be able to throw strikes, so you're taking out the, the ability to swing. He's swinging right away. I mean, every pitch, there's probably less pitches he's taken over the postseason than he swung at. And so a guy like Snell doesn't have, you know what that does for him? I don't have to throw a strike. Yeah. That stress goes away. Couple swings, couple misses, and now an 0 2 from Blake Snell. In on him, flexed into right. Here comes Soto. That drops in for a base hit. Back to back soft singles to open the inning for the Phillies. Bryce Harper yelling at himself, I guess, not happy with his rebounds. His read, yeah. And, and if there was a, if we had a two way situation with. Uh, Castellanos, he would go, see, that's why you swing. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. He gets uh, jammed a little bit, and that is all it takes now for two base hits. And there you go, two base hits in a row. We, we wondered how many wow. that would happen. You're right, though. This is what the Phillies were doing against St. Louis. It's what they did, especially in game one against Atlanta. And Harper, who's taken a lot of pride in his base running, as a lot of this lineup has, Wishes that he had gotten to third. Instead, first and second. Nobody out for Alec Bone. Joe's one takes it in the dirt. Good See, stop by Nola. That is awesome. And whether you ever think about bunting or not, you're putting the pitcher in a position to throw those strikes. You can actually, when you're squaring around the bunt, you can see the strike zone way better because there's less movement of trying to be a big, long swing. So you could do this two more times with no ability to bunt to get a strike and then go to hitting. But I think he's actually trying to do this and get the runners over to second and third. Snell trying to get a tell. Now perhaps the right thing, no matter the hitter, but especially with Alec Baum. Had an RBI single in his first at bat of the division series, but has won for 17 since. If you are bunting, you want to make Machado feel the bunt. Swings away, another blooper. Base hit right center field. And on three singles, the Phillies take the lead. Castellano safe at third. Throw gets by, allowing Baum to take second. His approach was right field, but it sure looked like that was the way he was swinging. And if you're going to take a ball like that and go to right field with it, you're staying back, you're letting the ball travel, and that's the reward you get. Great situational hitting if that's exactly what he was trying to do. And really the throw getting away now puts a, a big inning in play for the Philadelphia Phillies. And what better guy to have at the plate than Mr. Contact in Segura. And knowing that if he puts the ball in play, it's now a two-run lead if it's even a ground ball to short. Now the Phillies, who had just three hits in yesterday's game and a winning effort, have three hits in a row here in the second inning. They're talking about the home runs, that being the equation for the Phillies, with seven over their last three games. They're stringing it together here. Castellanos at third and Bowman at second. Gene Segura takes ball one anywhere but Machado and first base that's you want to think up the middle ground ball He's a really high percentage ground ball guy meaning Segura hits a lot of ground balls If you stay up the middle with a ground ball it not only gets the run in it may advance the next runner to third And that's what you got to do in the postseason you have to make contact With runners in second and third less than two outs you have to the teams that don't usually don't move on Well, we talk about you know, home runs being a big part of the equation for the champions in recent years, but the other piece of that, the Braves were the exception last year in that they didn't make a lot of contact. Typically, it's not just the homers, it's paired with an elite contact rate as a lineup, too. No doubt. 
Now leaning on that fastball so far. One, two, three, first inning on six pitches. Still looking for his first out of the second. Second and third, nobody out. Here's the 1 0 to Segura. That's low for ball two. I've heard people say, you know, how much energy could this crowd have after the Dodgers series and how raucous it was? Well, that's assuming everybody's the same person that's been in the game. But the Phillies have taken the crowd out in two games so far with early runs, and they're looking to, you know, put a crooked number on the board here. Team who was really searching for every run in the Padres. The girl with a chance to make this quite a hill. This is where you got to be disciplined if Segura and he throws you a 2 1 slider and you see spin, but it starts lower than you know it's going to break. You got to stay off of it. And if you're Snell, you're hoping to expand the strike zone with that slider. Fastballs by him, and it's two and two. He really needs a strikeout here, and that's what you're thinking. You rarely go into at bats where you're thinking, I've got to strike this guy out. This is one of those situations. Two, two. After Segura, it's Matt Veerling. Hitting's hard, especially these days. Coming into the postseason, what was the, what was the average? Of yeah, the, uh, the yeah, average nine, across right? baseball this postseason, 209. Another 2-2 two -two to Gene Segura, and a big strikeout for Blake Snell. Not an easy guy to do that again. No, that was huge. He does have a high percentage of swings with two strikes, but he usually finds the barrel of the bat to get to the ball. You know, and that 209 average is taking into effect everybody, right? And now they can bring the infield in for the Padres and kind of keep it in a one-run game if there's another ground ball. So a lot of pressure now goes to Veerling. A couple guys coming up here in Veerling and Sosa who are getting their first start since the first game of the division series. First time the Phils have faced the lefty since then. They beat Max Freed. Veerling sends the first one in the air to deep right field. Soto's back on it. He lost it in the sun. It opens the door for a run to come and to score. And Veerling to get the second with a sun-aided double. Well, instead of... Two to nothing with two gone and a runner at second. It's two to nothing, still just one out. Second and third for the Phillies. Man, we talked about it. Tom talked about it, and that son hit him in the absolute perfect spot at the last minute. He's trying to shade it with the glove, but he can't pick it up. Sometimes you got to get on the side of the sun, which is harder to do when it's directly pointed in your eyes. He tried everything he did. He had the sunglasses, and it was unfortunate, really, for the Padres. Luckily, only one run scored because there was a tag situation, and you were going to tag and not be able to score there if you're bone. But a tough break. It's been a rough inning for Juan Soto, who was charged with an air on the throw they got by third earlier that allowed Alec Bohm to take second on his RBI single. It's the worst feeling in the world. I mean, you're trying your best to track that ball, and you've got to move and track it. And then when you look back to the ball, you all you see is a glare. You see this the sun, obviously. The reason the right fielder, I think, has the hardest ability to, to do just this is it's directly at him. He has no way to real shield it. The center fielder can shield it. He has the angles. Obviously, the left fielder can do the same thing. But the right fielder, based on where that sun is, looks at like it's a direct impact. Midfield comes in. Second and third, one gone. And the nine-hitter Edmundo Sosa in the dirt. Sosa hit 189 in a Cardinals uniform this season. Phillies got him at the deadline, worked on flat in his swing out with Kevin Long. He hit 315 in his 25 games for the Phillies. Played great defense. 
Yeah, under the radar, excellent pickup, of which they had several. Yeah, when you say flatten the swing, it meant a swing is too long, and with aggressive pitching and style of spin, that's going to be a bad recipe. See how long or longer. Yeah. And that's the problem. Whenever you're facing high velocity or a great spin, you can't have a long swing. A mistake, yes. But a good pitch, the long swing, is just going to create too much opportunity for this kind of swing and miss. And that's just a little lack of discipline trying to make something happen with the infield in. Two in the bank, second and third, one gone. Snell's 1-1. One, one. Is another bloop shot in the left that's in front of Profar. And the Phillies lead 3-0, dinking and doinking their way to the big inning. Well, so much for the loud home runs of last night, simply putting the ball in play, and it's 3-0 in game two. Big swing, jam, and I don't think Profar got a great read on this because he gets really close to catching this ball. And I think the combination of the big swing, broken bat, and the ball did not anticipate, if you're a left fielder, the ball to carry as much. Watch how close he gets to the ball at the end. You think maybe he might dive, but he stops right at the last minute. And it's been a dream inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, not so much for the Padres. Still just one gone. First and third. 22 pitches into this inning for Snell after the six pitch first. And it's back to the top in Kyle Schwarber. Fly to center on the first pitch of the afternoon. Aggressive again. Fielding's at third, Sosa's at first. One on one on short. I mean, Snell, Snell on the outside's handling this pretty good. I don't know what's going on on the inside because he has not given up a lot of hard contact and could very easily be out of the inning. But unfortunately, he's staring at that three spot and still a lot of traffic on the bases. There's only been one hard hit ball in this inning. It's the one that Soto lost in the sun. Spin away. Right now, Blake Snell feels like everything's scheming against him. It's a tough spot to be. Don't get me wrong. I mean, when you throw a pitch, you're out of it's out of your control, right? What happens next is more deemed the defense. Unless you strike everybody out, that's the only way you can be in control. And I think he's made enough quality pitches in this inning to not have these results. That's for sure. You know, Blake Snell, who he was scratched right before his first start of the season, some groin tightness, and so he didn't pitch until mid-May. He struggled at first, but since the start of July, this has been one of the top pitchers in the league. His two under to Kyle Schwarber. Oh! The corner for strike two. Number one strikeout rate in the National League since the start of July. The walks he's cut down, obviously the, the six walks in the wild card start. Got to toss that out, but command has been much better. We're in his second season with the Padres. After those five years in Tampa Bay that included a bunch of pitching in the postseason and a Cy Young. Let's go over 2 2. Schwarber watches ball three. Pretty good take after a nasty fastball away. If he has feel for his slider right here on a 3-2 pitch off of the fastball that he's throwing on the outside part of the play, it'd be hard for Schwarber to lay off of it. But it all comes down to a pitcher's feel and confidence. If he can make that look like a strike and end up a ball, knowing the hitter is aggressive and will swing at it. Dealing in third, so said first, Kyle Schwarber fouls back a heater. Sosa was running with that pitch. Hey, how are your hands, by the way? Uh, that was close to right up here. Fast. Yeah, I guess I, we'll find out. Huh? We really did ask you. Do you need me to? I'm not very. I've had some bad experience in the booth getting hit. Have you really? Yeah. You hit up here. Yeah, I've always wanted to catch one, and I got what I deserve. So here we are, and shouldn't get. Shouldn't
shouldn't get one up here, but I just wanted to make sure you're all right. Yeah. Yeah. Spooked us a little bit. That's, that's another three-two. Is popped up down the line. Machado into foul ground. He's out of room. Sosa not running that time. One of the things that we've been looking for is are the Phillies going to turn the running game up because right. Austin Nola behind the plate the worst catcher in the National League at throwing runners out Yeah, not all his fault, but he's got some pitchers that are pretty slow and delivered to home plate now a left-hander has an advantage But they've stolen a lot of bases on Blake Snell as a left-hander So once you define his move and he, he, you, you get the tips you can pick it up and go on movement Sosa over there first one of the fastest runners in the league. He's not going it's a ground to the first Drury knocks it down and gets just one. Going to have a shot at the double play there. Instead, a run comes through the back door. And the Phillies have a 4 nothing lead. I mean, you got to burn this film, right? I mean, this is just the perfect scenario for the Phillies. Unfortunate for the Padres. I mean, this was going to prevent a run. But once he couldn't get it and didn't know where it was, the runner was able to score even though they got an out. But contact worked the count to three and two, and Schwarber was able to hit a ball that provided a run. In an area where the Padres figured to have a clear advantage in this series, defense doing them a little bit in this inning. Reese Hoskins, the eighth man to bat in the second for the Phillies. Hoskins, who has homered against Blake Snell on the first pitch before, watches a well located first pitch this time. Well, what this is doing for the Padre, Padres indirectly is like their uh, batting wake up call. All right. Now, your pitcher's going to say that's all they get. There's your mark. Four runs. The offense is going to have to start doing something to get to their mark with eight innings to do that. I'm telling you, I just got this feeling that Soto's going to do something special at the plate because you know he's that kind of player. To have that ball get caught in the sun and be in. I'm going to mark down that second at bat is he's going to he'll be extra locked in. Thirty third pitch of the second inning after the six pitch first. An 0 2 from Blake Snell. And now it becomes a little bit dangerous area for a starting pitcher when he hits those 30 plus pitches. The bullpen's going to get up just in case. This inning gets extended even more and you put your pitcher at risk once you get to 40 pitches for sure. 34th. Look down the line. Soto a long way to go. Battling the sun again. Line Soto won't get there. Yeah, there remains one and two. Hoskins trying to get things going again. He's four for 31 in this postseason. One of those hits. A three run home run on Friday night in Philly. Tim Hill and Pierce Johnson both getting loose. Sosa's at second, two gone, second inning. Already four in the bank for the Phils. Out of the one two from Snell. Ball two. Kind of the microcosm of the Padres, right? Deliberate pitchers, Darvish, Snell, deliberate hitters. Whereas the opposite for the Phillies, they get the ball, they're moving, they're on quick pace. How much of that you talk about Snell drifting, and that can be a problem for him? How much of that is? All the time he takes between pitches. Yeah, that's part of it. You know, every personality is different when you think about a uh, pitcher and how they go about things, you know. And 
and not you can't cookie cut everybody but when you're processing a lot of information and anything like this is not going well you start thinking more and that can just get you off just a little bit but when you're dominant and you're just getting it and going boy it's a fun place to be and we've seen that side of snow leaves one over the plate and gets away with it soto can't see it now he shades his eyes finds it and puts it away ending the second inning nightmare for blake snell and the padres who trail four nothing in game two and Aaronola, who's put up zeros in 34 of his last 35 innings has his four nothing lead as he attacks brandon jury ball one been hoping for a little lightning out of brandon drew he does a lot of his damage against left-handers but his power in the lineup when there isn't many hits to be had. I just won for 15 in the postseason. Corks this one down the line, hooking to the corner and gone. Lightning in a bottle from Bob Melvin, and it strikes right away. 4 1 game. Jury gets the Padres on the board. <laughs> right on cue, right? I mean, uh -huh. that's what they were hoping for, and he hit it in the perfect spot. I don't think this is a home run in many ballparks. The reason is there's a low left field fence about, I don't know, a foot and a half lower than the regular fence, but that's all it took, and it got here quick. And there's 28 home runs during the regular season. He's the choice over Will Myers, even though Myers is the guy that had the lone hit for the Padres last night. He only had seven homers during the regular season. And Bob Melvin reading the room, seeing the home runs have been kind of ruling the day. Uh, that play works. You're the jury's first swing. I'm telling you, the alarm clock went off for the San Diego Padres. I mean, it was a close game yesterday. And now Josh Bell sends one in the air, down the line to right. If it's fair, it's gone. It's a fair ball. Back to back bombs. Bang, and it's 4 2. two swings to cut the lead in half. Momentum? Could be. Hassan Kim now shows one and takes a strike. It's almost like the offensive version of a shutdown inning from a pitcher, right? A pitcher goes out there, keeps the momentum going, shuts things down. So the offense here comes right after Snell takes the air out of the building with a four-run inning. And they reignite it with two home runs. Oh, and two oh. on Kim. Well, I've just seen it too many times on really good players showing up when they need to intuitively. Hey, it's for nothing. We got to do something. And they're trying every time they get to the plate. But there's something about that last inning waking you up to say, if we don't get some runs soon, we're in big trouble. Sosa gets killed. Well, here's the first home run, and this is the one that I was talking about. Watch how quick this ball leaves the ballpark, and watch how inches over the lower part of the wall. It's cut down in this left field. Watch how close that is. And if it's the, I don't know, four or five feet over to the right, it's a double. And then the second homer is just a majestic. I mean, right over the foul pole from our view. And this one got the energy back in the crowd I, about as fast as you can. 4-2 ball game. One gone second inning. Trent Grisham swings and misses. Now Grisham hit 381 over the first two games or the first two rounds of the postseason. And in a lot of ways was their best hitter. Went over three with a couple K's last night.
You know, I said something's got to happen to shock the other team's system. The Phillies did that in the previous inning with the defense and the and the runs, and then all of a sudden you're going up against a pitcher who hadn't given up a run in forever, and boom, boom, you shock that system, and now it seems like, okay, he's mortal. We can get some runs off of this guy. But you got to do it first. Yeah. Padres hadn't done it in a long time, just the one inning where they'd scored over the last 22, and Nola hadn't given anything up in a long time. We're finding some reason to believe with the back-to-back -back homer, and so now Grisham takes ball two. Two solo home runs yesterday won the game. Two solo home runs for the Padres, and they're down two. This goes to show you. Grisham to first, that sinking liner is caught by Reese Hoskins. Two out second inning, and here for the first time in postseason history, brothers face off pitcher, hitter. Aaron Nola against Austin Nola. Little brother against big brother. I really can't put into words how incredible this must be for either one of them. You put it aside because they're in the postseason. Regular season, you can have more fun with each other and talk trash and do all those things. Now it's it means even more. So, what do you think? You think he swings at the first pitch? Ooh, yeah. All right, come on. What do you? You got to swing it. I'll, I'll walk back to the hotel if he does. Uh, <laughs> I can't do this by myself, John. Oh no! Oh. Stay right there. Good thing it's only 200 yards away. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so strike one on Austin. When these guys faced off last year, Aaron struck him out on three pitches, including his two hardest fastballs of the year. Part of a game where Nola took a perfect game into the seven. That's a chopper to third. Bones got it. Little Bro wins the first battle of this postseason matchup. Padres have life. Home runs from Jury and Bell, and it's a 4-2 game. Five occasions or five sets of brothers that have had their teams go head-to-head -head in the postseason. Most latest was Sandy and Roberto, back-to-back -back postseasons in 96 and 97. But that was the first time pitcher faced hitter. Battle of the oh. Strike one from Blake Snell to JT Real Muto. And we mentioned that Austin struck out on three pitches when he saw Aaron last year this year he went over his first two he came up in the sixth inning in a 0-0 game fell behind in the count on two and then got a base hit the other way to score a run and beat his brother one nothing final score in that game real Muzzo. The liner to third that's snared by Machado. Ken Rosenthal is with the Nola parents. Thanks, Joe. We are here with A.J. Nola and his wife, Stacy. They are the parents of Aaron and Austin Nola. A.J., let's start with you. How nerve-wracking is it for you watching this? Well, you know, it, it was a lot of anticipation. I was uh, real anxious before the game. I'm kind of settled down a little bit now. And when, once that first pitch got pitched, it was, uh, it was a little bit better, but... I just got a little nerve wracking when Austin got up to the plate, and so Aaron's got him the first at bat. Now tell me about the jerseys. You've got both of them on today. I do. It all started last year. You know, when I, I, I had a, a thought to wear two jerseys when Aaron's pitching, you know, I had Aaron's jersey on after Austin's jersey, and when Austin was was playing and Aaron wasn't then I had you know I switched them around <laughs> so I, I had to keep that going you know <laughs> now last question you bought a motor home when the boys were young so they can go around playing travel ball what is it like for you realizing that they are in the National League Championship Series today that all that work was worthwhile well it I, I tell you it was it was worth every motor home trip and every tournament and uh, everything to this point is just so surreal worth every penny of it AJ, thanks so much. Joe, back to you. All right, Kenny. One ball, one strike on Bryce Harper. And AJ and Stacy know something that neither of these teams know, and that is they are going to the World Series. Yeah. One way or another, they get to go to the Fall Classic and watch one of their boys play. That's the truth. They've been flying all over the country, chasing these series down, and this makes it as convenient as can be with the Suns facing off. They said they obviously don't care who wins. Stacy said, though, that she's rooting for it to end in five because she doesn't know if 
They can handle the jet lag that it comes from <laughs> Sunday in Philly, Monday in San Diego. So one of you boys finished it in five, Stacy said. On a 2-1, Harper tries to lay off and does ball through. Well, here's the challenge for Bob Melvin now and for Blake Snell. The game is 4-2, and he can't afford for this game to get much further than this. So look for the bullpen to be involved early. Blake's going to have to pitch perfect to stay in the game. It'd be my opinion because it is that big of a game for San Diego. With oh. a day off tomorrow. He has that luxury after tomorrow though. It's not going to be as easy to throw in your high leverage guys whenever you want There's that glove side command you've been watching perfect three and two on Harper Pop up on the left side machado has got it spotted Two gone in the third You know, it often is a roller coaster with Blake Snell. How about the difference in the first inning to the second? Six pitches in three minutes in the first inning, 37 pitches, almost a half hour in the second. Yeah, a lot of unfortunate luck, and that's part of the deal when you're pitching. I thought he handled everything about as well as you could outwardly. It's the inward part that, you know, each pitcher is trying to maintain. How about this? After, well, I don't even know if we have time to even get this stat. He right. put it in play. Swing. Wow, he took oh. one. All right, 99 pitches coming into this. 61 swings. I I don't know that I've ever seen something like that, but we got to take. Not two in a row, right? Yeah, uh, two in a row. Think about that. 99 and 61. So it's a little over 61%. Quick math, or either that, or I'm trusting Rick's math because no, he wrote it down for us. I think you, you can usually trust Rick, and that made it pretty easy math. Rick Pajuski, our brain up here in the booth. One one to Castellanos, three straight takes. Hey Krajewski, how many times Nick Castellanos done that? <laughs> I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. Yeah, the major league average swing rate is 47 percent. And he's above 60 percent in this postseason. Always an aggressive guy, and it paid off his first time up. Looped the base hit the other way. Hooks this one to left center field. Profiles there. Blake Snell with a one-two-three third. Well, you've been saying Juan Soto and these stars gonna get going for the Padres at some point. They'll come. Content from the playoffs. Follow us on MLB on Fox on TikTok. All playoffs long. All one on Jurickson Profar. By the way, it's a fake person if that ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Uh, I no, promise you. No check mark by the Smoltz account. No. Top of the order for the Padres against Nola. Back to back home runs from Jury and Bell last inning. After Profar, it'll be Soto and Machado. Well, we kind of mentioned it yesterday of how we thought it might be more of a hitter's day today because of the sun and the heat. And now in the next hour, though, is your biggest window to try to get cash in because the shadows will start creeping over the mound. Oh. So really look at these next two to three innings if you're the Padres to try to put some points on the board because the shadows will have an impact as the next 35 to 45 minutes take place. Boy, I used to love the shadows. Yeah. As a pitcher, you oh. try to work extra quick once you got into them. Max oh, man. Your time out there. You know, honestly, I, I check with the catcher. And I would ask the catcher, what can't you see? And he'd go, spin. I said, well, then that's what we're throwing. <laughs> he said, oh, Because if man. you can't see it, the hitter can't see it. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, you might not catch it, buddy, but <laughs> he ain't hitting it. Two two to jerks in profile is swatted foul. Well, we thought we might see some more offense than we did last night. It was a very low bar that was set, but already doubled the number of hits, already tripled the number of runs. Game two of this National League Championship Series, these Dragon Slayers, surprise entrance. 2 2. In the left field. Schwarber. 
Padres got it. Tom Verducci's got one of the Padres home run hitters. That's right. Josh Bell normally down four you chip away this time back to back home runs on fastballs. When you got in the box tell me about your approach and what it felt like going around the bases. Yeah, honestly after the inning before you know going into the bat, I was like okay we might want to take here but after uh, Brandon left the yard I said you know what if he throws me a cookie first pitch I'm going to be on it. Brought the crowd back in the game. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Tom, thanks to Josh. One gone in his third inning. Juan Soto comes to the plate, and you I have think, a sense that yeah, I think he's going to be aggressive. But he threw him a oh. great pitch, a changeup. See, the difference between so Soto and the rest of the uh, players, if you're aggressive mindset, you'll swing at that pitch. But if you're disciplined but with aggressive mindset, you'll lay off a pitch that's not in your inner third spot that you want. You know what Soto is? He's stubborn. He is stubborn when it comes to his pitch and his lack of willingness to chase it. Well, you got to be disciplined in your batting practice and everything. You recognize the strike zone. You try to stay and live in the strike zone and hit the mistakes. Oh, uh, two and one. Whatever it's worth, while he's still searching for his big moments, his ground out his first time up was his hardest hit ball this year. And he got into a good count and he got the ball he wanted. And of course, the shift that will be gone next year gobbled that one up. On a 2 1 pitch, Soto chops one right shot. Sosa there in the shift. Again, a hit dies in that shift. Two gone. And tonight at 7.30 Eastern, it's game one of the American League Championship Series. The Yankees and the Astros on TBS. Game two is tomorrow night on TBS. Then on Friday, we're in Philadelphia for game three of this series with coverage starting at 6.30 on FS1. Davis and Tyone, Justin Verlander in game one tonight. I would, I would suggest Kenny on Friday get a covering for his phone. Because, you know, the noise alerts were bad in Philly for the Atlanta series. I have a feeling they're going to get like dangerously bad this yeah. weekend. Yeah, what a scene it was last weekend. And Philly's trying to get a 2-0 lead to go back into that environment. Here's Machado down the line, hooking foul. What's your feel for that Astros-Yankees series going on? I think a lot of adrenaline for the Yankees getting there tonight won't be that big a deal because, you know, they've had to, they've had a strange route to the Houston Astros. You couldn't ask for a perfect scenario if you're a Houston Astros of creating chaos while you're waiting to play whatever team would come. So it's going to be a great series. I think I think tomorrow becomes that lag of the the travel and the reality, but it's going to be a great series. And we all feel it, right? When we have a bad night of sleep, a lot of times you don't feel it the next day. You feel it the day after. Yeah, for sure. And you got an Astros team that's played three games over the last 13 days. They well, technically another. four. Okay. If you count the 18 inning game. That's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. One and two on Machado. And the Yankees, if that series were to go the distance, that'd be eight games in nine days. That's what you do over the course of the right season, but this obviously different. Yeah, this is, we asked both managers here, and you know, will you have more of a trust factor? We have to be more patient. This game won't be that, but I'm talking about after you lose the off day, because you can't do the things in this series that you would typically do with the two off days and the time off. Oh, John. Oh, my. Get knocked over your Starbucks. <laughs> I had it. Where were your hands? I looked up at the wrong time. <laughs> How did that not destroy my drink? What is my that drink? made of? My drink is still okay. It's a Man. miracle. Dude. I looked at the last <laughs> second and I said the ball's coming. How did that not shatter? Oh. And my, my shirt has got nothing on nothing it. Nothing on it. It's a miracle, Ooh. folks. He's still got his Starbucks. Didn't have to make a catch. The shirt's fine. Machado's down on strikes. This third inning is over. And Machado, with a word for the home plate umpire, not liking perhaps how quickly Nola came home with that one. But a one, two, three inning for Nola. He had asked for time, it looked like. Didn't get it. And that's that. Pepco Park in San Diego before this series heads off to Philadelphia, where some nice weather awaits there, too. Four runs for the Phillies in the second, two runs for the Padres in the second. Alec Bohm fouls off Blake Snell's first pitch. Bohm started the scoring with a base hit in that second inning. 
Not gonna lie, I'm a little shook up. Yeah, you couldn't find the ball either. We can't find the ball. It's in. The, it has to be in the booth, and we can't find it. Check that cup. We go right in it. <laughs> Goodness. It's only two. Well, one day after they were breaking some hard hit records, the average exit velocity is a touch below 90. Anything 95 and above is hard hit. That four on second inning, the Hedgers one hard hit ball. Put it in play, and good things were happening. Snell delivers 0 2. Got those shadows working in his favor now. Yeah, and he's starting to throw a slider a little bit more in the first two innings only four of them And that's a big pitch for him He's been a heavy fastball usage guy today and the last inning he threw six of them So maybe starting to get the feel for that attack early with the fastball and then the second and third time around Start throwing more sliders I believe hitting below 200 on his breaking stuff this year Deals a one two to ball it's a breaking pitch. He went around strike three second K for Snell Got to be ready for 96 97 and when this thing has tight spin look at the spin that thing is so tight Remember I talked about the table and falling off the table That's the kind of pitch that he wants to present to the hitter He wants it to look like it's right there on a flat plane and then disappears Just like it falls off a table and some of the hitters have not been able to stay off that pitch Gene Segura with one go. He chases one in the dirt And again, I really think, you know, league wide, the reason we see so much of this is the training and philosophy on how to counterbalance each other. And I'll explain after this pitch. A lot of teams have a philosophy hitting wise. Don't sacrifice and change your swing. We just need you to swing and don't waste, it, you know, your ability to hit the ball over the fence. So what does that bring in? It brings in more swings and misses, strikeouts, walks. Same thing with the pitcher. You don't want it. You don't care. If you fill up that strike zone, but make it max effort, spin it as hard as you can, throw it as hard as you can. So it takes away a little bit of the feel and touch of being able to throw strikes. Not everybody, but that's the general philosophy. So that's why you see two strike approaches don't really exist because they don't want it to exist, and hitters are following the program. 2 1. Swinging roller up along first. Snell's got it. And he's got Segura. So that is seven straight retired since it became 4 0. Finalists for the 2022 Hank Aaron Award have been announced, and fans can cast their vote for the top offensive performer in each league at MLB.com slash Aaron. Voting ends October 24th. And I know you've heard me talk about this, but that's why the exit velocity are, it's sexy numbers, right? When we see a home run from Schwarber, it's 120, and we fall, our chins drop to the ground. But your best hitters in the game will have an average exit velocity less than most people because they're putting it in play more often, getting more hits, and they're not just swinging for the fences. Aaron Judge. Oh. Well, he's kind of had that kind of year that we haven't seen before where he combines average and power. He's That's why he's going to win the MVP. But we don't see too many of those guys who can utilize both skill sets. Matt Reerling takes in the dirt. One ball, one strike. He had a RBI double came in to score. But RBI double is aided by the Sun. Juan Soto couldn't find it in right. It was that kind of inning for the Padres and for Snell. Usually the issue is the walks. He's still not walked anybody in this game. Back to a strike two. Well, I love the way he's handled it. I mean that that second inning would break the back of most pitchers He'd show more emotion. You'd be more frustrated and he didn't show it you got to give him credit on that He's got back-to-back -back one two three innings since the second Phillies won the first game of this series 2-0, 4-2 in this one. Aaron Nola back to the mound. And for the Padres, 4-5 and 6 coming up.
Padres got their two runs on back-to-back -back swings from Drury and Bell, both hitting home runs. They'll be up second and third in this inning as Jake Cronenworth oh. takes strike one. Nola's been in command other than those two kind of like shock to the system right first one over the left field wall second one majestic both pitchers settling down and putting up zeros after that that's nasty and that's that change up that comes out of the same slot and we're going to show you later about why getting downhill is so important for these Phillies pitchers these two big right handers have the ability to kind of silence the offense because they get downhill in there extension so good that the ball pops on the hitter just late life boy it shows him a little bit of everything and strikes him out on three pitches manipulating the baseball creating spin ball goes in ball goes away ball goes down he has three lanes he can throw the pitch to and you're seeing some feeble swings because of how nasty the pitches are See it going in and out of the shadows there too. Already hard enough facing guys like this, now having to deal with that. So here is Brandon Jury, put in the lineup for the first time in this series and homered on his first swing. He takes ball one. With the 28 home runs during the regular season, came over from the Cincinnati Reds at the deadline. 30-year-old having a career year. And this is where it gets tough. This is where it gets tough for the hitter. You're getting that that daylight in between the shadows. And here's the one-zero. Falls low, ball two. For more on Jury, here's Ken. Quite a story, Brandon Jury. In 2018, he missed most of the season with severe migraines and a fractured left hand. From 18 to 21, he batted only 214 with three different teams. So when the lockout ended, he had only one minor league offer. He thought to himself, I had better rake or I am done. He got in his car from his home in Oregon to Arizona where the Angels trained. That was the team that made the offer. Along the way, he got another offer, a better opportunity with the Reds. He signed there, revived his career, and as you said, Joe, he got traded to the dead Padres at the deadline. Yeah, he just barely made the Reds. He made it as a bench player, got his real chance because of injuries there, and has taken off. On a 3-0 from Nola, he takes oh. a strike. Got off to a promising start in his career with the Diamondbacks, but then things went sideways with the injuries that Kenny was talking about. So he goes home to Oregon after the 2020 season, and he works with his favorite hitting coach, his dad. And he basically relearned his swing. They focus on flattening the swing again, getting back to looking to hit line drives instead of trying to launch and a big swing there out in front and it's three and two and he shows that he still has that old line drive swing in him in a limited role last year with the Mets this season combining that line drive swing with an everyday chance for the first time in a long time this is what you get 30 year old playing a key role in a postseason game into left field Schwarber is there for round number two our game summary is presented by Liberty Mutual. Second game of this National League Championship Series. All the scoring in this game coming in the second. The Phillies doing it just by putting the ball in play. Four runs on five hits in the second. Padres doing it the way the Phillies did last night. And that is with homers. One of them came from this guy, Josh Bell. And the Padres are going to have to show the ability to score multiple innings if they're going to have a successful uh, postseason run to continue and beat the Philadelphia Phillies. It's only come in the last two innings or two innings of their last 24 or five because they had that big five run outburst against the Dodgers win that game and they've scored two here in the second. But they're going to have to be a little more creative against some really good pitching scoring a couple multiple innings Soto and Machado in this series one for 11 so far two and one on Bell
Now the 30-year-old, he's in his seventh year, getting his first chance in the postseason. It was rebuild after rebuild when he was in Pittsburgh. Then he goes to the Nationals. They tear it down in his first season there. Traded to the Padres at the deadline. And he's another guy who has had his dad as his favorite hitting coach and workout partner through the years. And his dad told him when he made it to the postseason, every at-bat that you've had in the majors, in the minors, in amateur ball, it's all been practiced to get you ready for these moments, for the biggest stage. Go make the most of it. Hit a home run in his first game in the postseason off Scherzer. And he's got one today against Nola. He's got a full count here. See the ball coming in and then going dark, light, mm -hmm. and dark. Josh Bell Boom. takes strike three. Nola gets the call on the outside corner and puts bookend K's on a one, two, three, four. Top of the order for the Phillies. Kyle Schwarber coming up. When feels severely underrated. Yeah. Come on. Eighth? Number one city in America for celebrating Taco Tuesday. That same survey found great taco town, great food town. Great town period, San Diego. Strike one at Edmundo Sosa. And they are fired up about their Padres. National League Championship Series for the first time in 24 years. Snell gave up those four runs in the second inning. He's gone six up, six down in the two innings since. He gets a chase from Sosa, and it's quickly 0-2. Well, I said he's going to pitch perfect since that inning. He's pretty much pitched perfect. I mean, to give Bob Melvin the opportunity to extend this game through Snell, he hasn't given him any reason to really get the bullpen up at this point, and he's keeping the game right where he needs to until offense catches up. Big-time credit to Snell on what he's been able to do. On three pitches, he gets Sosa. Nola will finish it off for the toss down to first. Because, I mean, that thing could have went sideways in that second inning. The bullpen was warming. Snell throwing 36 pitches yeah. in the inning. And not only did he get through it, he not given anything up since. No, he's been great. And here's the breakdown of the starters. And you see, look, you, the, the story's not told by those four earned runs. You go back and look at how they scored those four runs, you're going to feel like he's pitched equally as good as Aaron Nola has. But the difference was they just didn't play that inning very well. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And right now he's kind of determined to give him as many innings. Only 70 pitches here in the top of the fifth. First two times through the lineup, hitters below 200 against Snell on the season. When they see him for a third time, that average is above 300. That's what the Phillies are about to do. Kyle Schwarber's 0 for 2. But they're seeing him in some tough conditions. That's true. the shadows, so it kind of... Lessens that a little bit. Snell, the former first round draft pick, got a high school in Seattle, Washington. This is low, two balls and no strikes. Made it to the majors when he was 23. Five seasons in Tampa Bay, included some excellent postseason performances. The famous one, game six of the World Series, where Kevin Cash took him out while he was rolling. It's the greatest game he's ever pitched. And he's talked about that kind of being a fork in the road for his career. There were a couple ways that he could have handled that. He could have let it really destroy him. And he said for a while it really did take a lot of life out of him. But he said, no, I'm going to try and take this more into my own hands. I'm not going to put it in the manager's lap. I'm going to be more efficient. And he's not necessarily done that all the time. But it's been a focus of his, trying to pound a little bit more, trying to get deeper into games. He's getting another opportunity on the biggest stage here. But he's always pitched well. In the postseason, he's got a 2.89 ERA in his 12 games. Dangerous spot here. On 3-1, Schwarber takes a strike. Oh. Great pitch, 3-1. You get back to, again, neutral count. And it's definitely a pitcher's advantage if you feel like the hitter will expand the zone. You don't have to throw a strike with 3-2. You got a patient hitter, you got to make a quality pitch. It's a different scenario. On a 3 2, Schwarber lays off and takes ball four. First walk of the game issued by Blake Snell comes in the fifth. Schwarber keeps the barrel below. 
the strike zone and from going. Now it's Hoskins. Go for two today, four for 32 in the postseason. Now Reese is looking for middle in, middle to the plate to end for his home run stroke. To 27 or more, four straight full seasons. A little bit low, ball one. Guy that his longtime teammate Zach Eflin says has Philly written all over him. He's been there six seasons, longest tenured position player. And he's kind of been the face of the franchise for a lot of this long stretch where they've been searching for the postseason. As they bring in Harper, they bring in Schwarber and Castellanos this offseason. Hoskins, the guy there that's been the longest for the ups and the downs, most of the downs, a lot of teasing, a lot of Phillies teams that you feel like, okay, maybe this is the one to break through. But it's really cool that Reese Hoskins is around still, as they do finally break through and get to the playoffs for the first time in 11 years. On a 1-1 from Snell, there goes Schwarber, throw from Nola. Not in time. And the Phillies finally do take off in the running game. Kyle Schwarber steals second. Well, Kyle Schwarber did this against Snell in Philadelphia, stole a base. Once he's got the timing down from the left-hander, when you least expect it, expect it. And in the postseason, he takes his glove off of his ability to catch the ball. And a little nod to another scoring position for the Phillies. They're one of the most efficient stolen base teams in baseball this year. Two and two on Hoskins. And we're pretty darn aggressive this year. Obviously postseason outs even more to premium. Teams more hesitant to run. They haven't had a ton of base runners. But as they get one here, they go. Two two Hoskins. Watch his strike three. Fastball to the bottom of the zone. Nothing wrong with Blake Snell's stuff. That one, that one to Hoskins looked low and he took it and didn't get the reward. Four of the last five outs via the strikeout for Snell. Five total today. Yeah, who would have thought, as you're watching that second inning unfold, that Snell would be sitting here trying to finish off five? Far from out of the woods. With Schwarber at second, Rio Muto at the plate. Oh. Strike one. See, when he's pounding strikes right there and he throws a low slider, the hitter has no chance. Like, I, I mean, not literally, but almost, because his fastball gets on you so quick and then the tight spin on his slider disappears. If he starts this pitch on the same height and throws a slider, it's all, almost a swing and miss. Because the hitter remembers the last placement of the ball and the height of the ball. And it's really tough, as we mentioned, to pick up spin now with the shadow. So imagine if that pitch starts right where he last remembered it and it's breaking towards his back foot. Well, you can't, your mind is already made up that it's a fastball when he releases it and you go to swing and the ball is nowhere near the intended target or barrel. His 1 1. Cut on and miss, one and two. Definitely likes that four seam fastball. It's coming out of his hand. Hot. Using it a lot. One, two pitch. Do it again. I 
Diaz, his fastest pitch of the game right there. Turning it up to JT Realmuto with a runner in scoring position. Two gone in the fifth inning. The Phillies have a 4-2 lead in the game. They have a 1-0 lead in the series. Walking a stolen base for Kyle Schwarber. Another 1-2 pitch. Another foul ball. Probably one of the best relief release points I've seen. Consistency over the last five innings for Blake Snell. We mentioned only one walk. 37 pitches in the second inning. Looked like it was unraveling on it. Sticks in, trying to finish off five. His one two. Foul it again. Now, a quick word from Roman. When it comes to your health, what you do next matters most. Roman, official partner of Major League Baseball. It's another one of those tricky situations. A lot of fastballs, a lot of hitter, hitters falling off. When do you go to the slider? Do you stay with the fastball? We've seen hitters get uh, pitchers get burned after a lot of fastballs fouled off. They come up with a slower pitch, don't make the pitch, and the hitter gets a hit. And it really has been the Phillies that have benefited from that in the last series against the Atlanta Braves. It's a hard thing to, to muster when you've thrown, what, five or six pitches that you think you get the out on in their foul balls. Seven pitch to JT Realmuto. Takes the breaking ball in the dirt and it's two and two. So, so valuable for this Phillies team. It's overshadowed a little bit with the bigger names, but as complete of a package as you're going to find in the National League right here. Battling against Snell, waiting on a 2 2 pitch. Here it comes. Oh, no. Eventually. Padres. This is the part of the order over the first two rounds that really stood out for San Diego, but 0 for 9 for the first, I beg your pardon, 0 for 12 for the first two games in this championship series. It's strike on Kim. Late season narrative here over this last stretch. That is a base hit to left field for Kim to open the fifth. Hassan Kim's first hit of the series. And the time run will come up for the Padres. And today's telecast is sponsored by Indeed. We help people get jobs. And by Applebee's, where a dollar gets you five boneless swings with any handcrafted burger. We're talking about Aaron Nola rewriting that late season script. He always had had issues in September. 
Well, this season really started to hit his stride in mid-September. That included taking a perfect game into the seventh inning in his last regular season start. Didn't give up an earned run over his first two postseason games. And outside of the back-to-back -back swings that led to homers, nothing today. Well, he's connected and committed, and that's the one thing, conviction, he was talking about in his turnaround. To throw strikes, be convicted in what are you trying to do and own the both sides of the plate, which he's been able to do in his latest run of dominance. Facing Trent Grisham, who's got three home runs this postseason. One of the breakout performers of the postseason for the box. 2 0. It's a rare 2 0 count. Yeah, I mean, the Phillies on, uh, as an offense have chased a lot more off the plate, and you would expect that. That's the kind of offense they are, and the Padres haven't had many chases off the plate, which speaks to their discipline and kind of stoic offense, making the pitcher work, looking for the pitch they want to hit, taking a lot of pitches. On a 2 0, Grisham lifts one in the air to center field. Veeling has room to put it away on the edge of the track. Fifth. I'm going to give you a little perspective of what it's like to hit off of different pitchers, but these two pitchers we're going to be showing our teammates, and they have a really good ability to get downhill. And look at that 7.2. That's not his stride length, but that's his release point. So 7.2, he's releasing the ball. Less time to see it as a hitter. And Aaron Nola, not too far behind him, six foot nine is his release point. So what that tells you is, based on arm angle and when you let go of the ball, that long stride and release point of 7.2 is why his 97 actually looks like 99 to 100. We faces his brother here. Got him the ground out his first time. He's also got that unique kind of like gets under the ball a little yeah. bit. It has that late carry and sink when he's able to throw the two versions of his four seam and two seam. But the key to that is he's on top of the ball, even though his hand might be underneath the three-quarter delivery. Aaron against Austin, with Austin representing the tying run. It took Aaron 13 months from the time he was drafted to make it to the major leagues. It took Austin seven years, and he was this close to retiring before he ever reached the majors. At that point, he was a light-hitting shortstop, stuck in the minors, not enjoying baseball anymore. Thought he'd maybe get into coaching, maybe move home and work for his dad's construction company. He said, I can do that, or... I can throw one last Hail Mary and give this baseball thing one more go. He decided to make two big changes. Redesigned his swing and then the move that Kenny talked about. He moved from shortstop to catcher. And slowly those changes gave him new life. He started loving baseball again. He got a fresh start with a different organization. Went to Seattle. And made it to the majors after seven minor league seasons. And then there's Aaron who got there right away. He says when he found out that Austin was going to the major leagues, when he got that call, it brought him to tears. It brought him more joy than when he found out he was going to the majors himself because he knew what went into Austin getting there. I mean, an incredible path that earned even more love from little bro. Aaron's 0-2. Fouled off. It was Austin that got Aaron into baseball. Aaron started playing baseball because that's what Big Bro did. And then they kind of changed roles. When Austin was trying to make that move to catcher, he leaned on Aaron a lot. What is a pitcher like? What do I need to do to be good at this job? All I can think of is the neighborhood baseball games and wonder if they had a lot of kids like hey We got to break these two up man. Right. Here come the Nolas team captains those two. Yeah, get them on the up other side Kim's at first one gone <laughs> well, 
both big leaguers, both very hard workers, but personality-wise, the two could not be more different. Aaron, very calm, quiet, understated. Austin, more outspoken. He's kind of made his name as the vocal leader, especially of the pitching staff for the Padres. Both playing in the championship series. One of them headed to the World Series. There goes Kim. And a base hit to right center. Kim is headed home. Austin Nova gets his little bro. 4-3 game. The rare hit and run. You run first, you hit. The runner takes off and you go to the opposite side. This was classic base running. Not a lot of people would have scored on this, by the way, but Kim did not miss a beat. And when you don't miss a beat, every stride length is perfect. You hit the base the way you want to. And you come home and bittersweet here. Yeah. Like a sweet and salty <laughs> trip. <laughs> like sandwich or a bar. You don't even know how to react. One run game in the fifth. Top of the order. Jerks and Profar follows with a base hit of his own. Nola makes the turn. Castellanos throws. It's cut off. Padres have him cornered. offense seems to be a momentous offense meaning based on the numbers we told you they score in clumps not in a lot of innings but they've gone back to back now twice after one hit the very next pitch is a hit they did that with homers to get their two runs and now they've done this with base hits to get the third one and to get that man to the plate it seems like the game continues to find Juan Soto who is 0 for 2 today. He's 0 for 5 in this series. He's got the tying run at third and the go-ahead run at first. Yeah, this is not, not a great situation if you're Aaron Nola because you've got one of the most disciplined hitters. Even though he may not be on fire and locked in, you're trying to figure out how you leave this inning tied or with the lead at the very, I mean, obviously with the, the best-case scenario. It's hard to get him to ground into a double play, but that's what you're thinking. If you're Nola, is how do I entice this great hitter to hit the ball on the ground? Which he does. He hits the ball on the ground. Juan Soto, who has homered against Aaron Nola three times before. Brad Hand. I'm thinking change up if you're Nola against this hitter. See where he's at. See if he expands it. Yeah, that's exactly oh. what he threw and Soto took it uh, great pitch and they went they had a meeting at the mound just a remind of the Any information that needs to be relayed but The infields kind of semi in the middle fit infielders are playing kind of halfway as you look at that change up catching the strike Trailed this game for nothing they're back to within one Soto's out in front and it's 0-2 well, that was an incredible off-speed pitch that seemingly never got to the plate. Soto so far in, in front of that pitch. Nola's at third, profiles at first. If you're thinking Soto might go the other way or sit on a pitch middle to middle away to hit the ball, then you pound him inside if that's what you think he's doing. That's for the target set. 0 oh, 2. He rips it down the line towards the corner. It's a fair ball. Juan Soto has his moment. Time running to score. They've come all the way back. A 
Well, that's just great hitting. And I'm sure when we see the replay, I'm, I'm, I don't know that he missed the target, but this is just great hitting and pulling your hands in. And the superstar, look where they throw the pitch. That is inner half, and he just pulls his hands in, gets the barrel of the bat, and somehow keeps it fair from hooking. I mean, that is an incredible at bat on a great pitch. And now, Padres got action. And they've got Machado at the plate. Go ahead run now at third in a 4-4 game in game two. Infield pulled in. Ball one. They trailed the Dodgers three to nothing. Game four on Saturday night. Came back. Won that game. Juan Soto tied it with a base hit on that occasion. Trailed this one for nothing. Soto's tied it again. Hands ready to go. The left-handed batting Cronenworth on deck. Machado looking for the lead. One ball, one strike. I I'm actually processing how and what to do in this situation. I'm a little bit surprised they're pitching to Machado with the infield in and left-hander on deck with a base open. And you either got to really trust your pitcher is going to make some great pitches or you're looking at an opportunity for the Padres to break this thing open. One one down the right field line towards the pole. It is foul. Low pitches with two strikes. If you're going to get a strike and a called out, it's usually a low pitch away to Machado. But if you make that mistake over the plate, he does damage. Nola's one two. Got him. What a pitch from Aaron Nola. And two gone in the fifth inning. Well, that's incredible trust there and patience by Rob Thompson. And that's going to do it for Nola. What a great pitch on the outside part of the plate. Cutting slider slash cutter. And so Aaron Nola, who had not given up a run, not given up an earned run in the postseason, has given up four runs through four and two thirds, and the men at second and third his responsibility. The left-handed throwing Brad Hand is coming into the game to face the left-handed batting Jake Cronenworth. All tied up at four. They've got a chance at the lead now. Chance of their first lead of this series. Second and third. Two gone. Red hand on to face Jake Cronenworth. Now, Cronenworth has come up with some big hits against the Dodgers. But he's got a tough task here against Brad Hand. He's got late breaking sliders that you're going to see a lot of them in this at bat. First pitch. Dips low. And has pitched in three games in this postseason, not given up a run. He missed the end of the regular season with an elbow issue. And so they weren't totally sure what it would look like with him coming back, but he's looked exactly like he has for a lot of his career. He's been an all-star a couple times. But not yet closed on Nola. The 1-0. -oh. Strike one. Oh. Great breaking ball there. Well, Bob Melvin got what he he wanted after that four run inning Blake Snell if the Padres win this game put the Give it to Blake Snell. That's an incredible Job I know it's only three scoreless innings But it was such a mind-blowing inning that it gave the Padres offense a chance to catch up And now it looks like he'll go to that high leverage bullpen that he has out there to use 
And home of the one two. In the dirt, ball two on Cronenworth. And in his 12th season, seventh different team. That includes a few years here in San Diego. All star in 2017 for the Padres. Nick Martinez, who we saw pitching inning last night, part of that red hot bullpen. Two two. And hit him. And the bases are loaded. I mean, that's huge. I mean, two strikes, and he just let one get away from him. And now facing Drury, who's already got a homer, loves facing lefties with the bases loaded. Browns re energized. Now these are two franchises, two cities that have waited a long time for their teams to be in games like this. In a lot of ways, these teams having these great runs through their postseasons elevated by their home crowds. Tie game, fifth inning. Bases loaded for Brandon Drury. Ball one from hand. And he's given up a home run to Jury before. On a 1 0, Jury swings and misses. One ball, one strike. You're a right handed hitter, and this ball starts in the left hander's batter's box. Be ready to swing. It has such great late movement. But if that pitch starts down the middle, you've got to leave it, let it go if it's got spin on it because it's going to be at your back foot. Easier said than done when you're able to spin a ball like Brad Hand can do. Two in the bank to tie it, trying to take the lead with two gone. On 1 1, Drury bounces it foul, and it's 1 and 2. Well, the Phillies would love to see Harper come up in a tie game in the next inning. He's due up next. He... One two pitch in the dirt. Good stop by Rio Muto. Two and two. Bases loaded two two is your action pitch. You really don't want to get to three and two. And the reason you don't want to get to three and two, everybody gets that running head start with two outs because it's truly the action pitch. So you make your best pitch selection you think will result in and out. Bases loaded, two gone, two two pitch. Brendan Jury. Takes ball three, nowhere to put him. Well, here we go. Merry go round and a huge pitch in this series. If the Padres want to come back here, it would go a long ways on this pitch in this inning to increase those chances. There they go. Here it comes. Drury bounces one foul. We get to do it again. Billy's got four runs in the second inning. Padres answered with two in the bottom half of the second. Two more here in the fifth. Another 3 2 pitch to Brandon Drury. In the center field, it's down. The Padres have turned this game upside down. They lead 6 4.
He's seen a lot of them, and that one was right down the middle, even though he hit it off the end of the bat. Easily scores two. And even though it's the bottom of the fifth, the Padres know what's coming out of the pen, and they have been virtually unhittable. Yeah, it just blocks away here in the gas lamp quarter. 45,000 inside here, another however many outside watching in the high rises, watching in the park, out beyond the center field. The whole city captured by this Padres team, which has scored six consecutive runs to go from down 4 nothing to ahead 6-4. And, and that's huge. I mean, we talked about in the open, it's not a must win. It's not an elimination game, but it's close to a must win. You don't want to go to Philly down 2-0. Josh Bell takes ball two for the 26 teams to drop the first two games at home. Only three of them have come back to win the series. All three times in the World Series. Kansas City in 85. The Mets did it the next year. The Yankees did it to you guys in 96. Padres trying to get this tied up in a game of peace to send it back to Philly. 2-0. Shoots one to right. It's been an avalanche of noise and an avalanche of runs for the Padres. Seven straight. Seven four. Another hanger up. And Bell didn't know where he hit it. I mean, he hit it hard, but he didn't know where it was. And then, elated when he gets to first base. The two-strike hit batsman said it was huge at the time. It sure has become huge for the San Diego Padres, scoring three more times after Cronenworth got hit. With two of their deadline pickups, Brandon Jury and Josh Bell, who have combined to knock in five of the seven runs in this comeback. He came through first, and the Padres have not scored in a lot of innings, but in three different innings, five to the Dodgers, two here in the second, and five in the fifth in their last 25 innings or so, 26 innings. So timing has been pretty good yeah. so far. Sequencing things beautifully. Ha Song Kim, who got this thing all started with a single, came in to score. Faithful oh. five run seventh inning you're talking about against the Dodgers in the clinching game for the division series and They've got five runs here on six hits three of the five runs coming with two out And we mentioned the deadline pickup spell and Drury doing it when you add Soto into the equation six of the seven runs today Guys that AJ Preller brought in at the deadline oh. Look out Kim almost got hit one ball one strike well, Bellotti in the postseason since we've seen him has missed arm side a lot and he needs that slider That he throws to turn the corner away from a right-handed hitter Bellotti's 1-1 one, one. Same thing. Yeah, that's just the release point in mechanics and and I know they've gone to him a lot, but it's kind of like flirting with with danger. He's he's avoided Issues, but it's You're missing by a foot and a half. That's got to change quick, especially in the postseason against Dangerous hitters but Bellotti pitched in three of the four games in the division series and even though it was like this He gave up just the one run living on the edge though Here's his 2-1 pitch Ball three Well, if Kim gets the pitch he wants, he's a little guy that usually comes out of his shoes in the style of hitting that he does. 
You know, in Japan, he was known for a home run hitter, but he's known right now for getting big hits at the right moment for the Padres. Average more than 20 home runs per season in the KBO. First and third, two gone, and a 3-1 pitch from Bellotti. Kim takes ball four to load him up. Yeah, he hasn't come close to hitting this spot yet, and there needs to be a, you know, you're trying to make that quick mental in-game adjustment, like, what am I doing? He needs faster arm speed so that he can get out with his release point and get the ball on the other side of the plate. Right now, he's just dragging his arm, and his spin is backing up, and the fastball is leaking arm side, which tells you, typically, I got to get my hand out and get that arm speed a little bit more firm. Bases again loaded. Trent Grisham, the 11th man to bat in the inning for the Padres. He got shut out on one hit yesterday. Seven runs on nine hits this afternoon. Ball one on Grisham. Well, we said maybe some more offense today. I don't know if we thought it was going to go this far to the other end. Combined two runs on four hits yesterday. Combined today, 11 runs on 14 hits. And we're only halfway through this game. Yeah. And he's talking to him and saying, this is too long of a delay to put you back out there. Great job, and he's turned it over the pen. It's just too long of a delay to have, to have Snell go back out. It's been 32 minutes since his last pitch. Yeah. I mean, if it was a, if they'd had a, you know, let's just say two run lead, one run lead, and it was quicker, we might have put him back out there, but too long of a delay to let your starting pitcher sit when you've been in rhythm and you're already up there around 90 pitches or so. No matter what, though, you said it. He oh. deserves as much credit as anybody for this rally. Uh -uh, unbelievable game that may not look great on the, you know, scheme of giving up four runs. It's how he gave up those four runs that tells the story. Ball and a strike on Trent Grisham. Two balls and a strike. I mean, Grisham's the right guy at the plate right now for a guy who's struggling with his release point. I doubt that Grisham will sp swing outside the strike zone if he doesn't come close. Here's the 2 1. Grisham takes ball three. Bellotti has missed all over the place. Song, Grisham swings and misses, and the count goes full. Wow. First of all, the wow that he swung at that pitch, and the second wow is that he threw his best slider of the entire time coming in, even though it was a ball. I really didn't think Grisham would swing out of the strike zone, but he did, trying to be aggressive on a 3 1 pitch. All right, so three and two with the bases loaded again. Here it comes. That's down the line foul. Well, the book is closed on Aaron Nola. Six of the seven runs charged to him. One of the runs charged to hand. Well, this crowd has been standing for about 40 minutes. Which tells you all you need to know about the inning. The Padres are out. Well, you said it when the Phillies got the four ends in the top of the second. It needed to be an alarm for the Padres offense. Better get it going in a hurry. And they got two immediately in the bottom of that inning. Back-to-back -back homers on back-to-back -back pitches. And then five runs here in the fifth. Grisham looking to get greedy.
Well, he's now seen the shape of that breaking ball three consecutive times. I haven't seen too many fastballs thrown for strikes out of Bellotti. There's ever a time for an outside fastball strike would be right now. I just don't think that's in his trust factor right now. This be the eighth pitch to Trent Grisham. Side corner. That ends a five-run inning. It's another five-run inning for the Padres. They did it in the decisive game four on Saturday. They do it here to take what was a four-nothing deficit and flip it around. Seven for San Diego onto the sixth inning. After the Phillies took the first game 2-0, they raced out to a four-nothing lead here in game two. But the Padres have scored seven straight. 7-4 ball game, sixth inning. Bryce Harper leads off as the Padres' bullpen goes to work. Ball in from Nick Martinez. And now the Padres have this thing set up to take advantage of what has been their biggest strength in this postseason, that is the bullpen. Oh, they have been on a record-setting pace, and they've got some flamethrowers. This guy just, he knows how to pitch. Fastball over the top, curveball changeup. There's that changeup. I mean, it's like a screwball comes off his third and fourth finger and just rotates the opposite way. They're hitting only 158 off that pitch. Harper one for two. Waits on this one, lofts it to right center field. Soto's over, watches it short hop the wall. Soto's third to second, not in time. Bryce Harper with another multi-hit game. And he's saying, okay, we see your seven-run rally. Watch us. I'll tell you something, he almost looked like he was sitting on that pitch. That changeup was up, and no more that we get it out of our mouth that, that nobody was hitting it. Look at what Harper's able to do and get a much-needed double. The offense for Philly kind of went stagnant after the second inning. But they're hoping to answer that five run inning with at least a, a run or two of their own. Harper's 13th hit of this postseason. And it leads the majors by a few. So leadoff man in scoring position. First hit for the Phillies since that four run second inning. The only hit for the Phillies outside of that inning. Castellano stumps it foul. Castellanos had a base hit, came into score as part of the four-run rally. See, this part of the game in the sixth inning, I, I, again, I know theory and philosophy takes over reasoning. But getting this run in is huge, seven to five. You don't have to tie the game up in this inning or everybody hit a home run. It's the importance of that leadoff double now becomes Harper must score to get the game closer in any other bonus. Ball and a strike. But if everybody that comes up now in this inning tries to hit a two run homer, he won't score. That's the biggest difference when you're facing elite pitching and you're facing guys who have swing and miss stuff. You have to get, if you can get rewarded with a base hit to right field and move the runner over, that's like to me one of the greatest at bats short of a two run homer. My ball and strike on Nick Castellanos. Yeah, but a nice postseason. Swings and misses. And credit down to both these offenses because they've both shown an ability to be both things. We've seen home runs from both of them. We've also seen sustained rallies by just putting the ball in play from both. Yeah, and I think, honestly, those two swings, he was trying to do that, but the perfect pitch inside just tied him up. He missed getting the ball to shoot the other way. So now he's got to just, whatever he can with two strikes, find a way to put it in play. One two from Nick Martinez. Castellanos takes ball two. Nick Martinez got to the major leagues with the Texas Rangers. Spent four seasons there. Didn't pitch particularly well. Then he goes to Japan. Pitches there for four seasons and starts to really figure some things out. Pitched for Team USA in the Olympics last year and dominated. Jumped back on everybody's radar here in the major leagues and signed a four-year contract with the Padres fresh off that performance.
His 2 2 offering. Misses. Ball three. He spent some time during the pandemic taking online courses through Driveline and through Rapsodo. Going through you know, kind of a deep dive on all his pitches, his mechanics, the way that he grips balls, and you know, worked on several detailed things. And then took a lot of pride in getting back to just kind of being an athlete on the mound, too. But all those things together got back to the majors and has been a key component in different roles for the pods. First in the rotation, and then now out of the pen. His 3 2. Nasty changeup to get Castellanos. That's one of the pitches that benefited the most from his time in Japan and all the study and extra work that he did on his mix. Start Saturday strong with Big Noon Saturday on Fox. Heisman frontrunner C.J. Stroud leads number two Ohio State against Iowa, followed by a top ten showdown out west. Ninth rank UCLA takes on number ten Oregon. That's all on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Phillies with four in the second, Padres two in the second, five in the fifth. Alec Bohm knocked in a run in that second inning. Harper in second, one away. Bohm takes the ball. And for Martinez, before he had this journey from the majors to Japan and back, he was mostly a second baseman. Even when he was in college at Fordham, only gave pitching a try because there was a new neighbor that moved in down in Florida where he grew up and he had pitched some in the majors in the early 2000s His name was Juan Alvarez and he said why don't you come give this a try and he's pretty good at it and Nick's dad encouraged him to keep working with Juan he said you never know just in case you keep playing second base that's your passion but just give me something else that you could do and he goes to Fordham to play second started pitching more and more as his career went on there well for 10 in the majors as a hitter by the way, so uh, he loved doing that but ultimately chose right His one one to bone One and two well his change up reminds me of a another Padre Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman made a living for this team and just that high leg kick and the ball never got to the plate he threw enough fastballs to set up the changeup. This is what Martinez does. He thinks he puts the, the thought in the hitters. I'm going to speak of the devil. He throws fastballs in gets you to speed up and then just when he does that he drops the change up and it's too late for a hitter to recognize. Breaking pitch bounces short for Kim. Boom is out number two. At the third goes Harper. Want to track player stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads the MLB postseason in OPS? Besides having that changeup that reminds you of Trevor Hoffman. Remember, Trevor was a shortstop at the start yeah. of his pro career. So another transition, and he transitioned from a hard throwing reliever with the rotator cuff injury and said what do I do now and that change up was the answer to that question that's unbelievable I mean first of all I think it was hell's bells when he would come in you don't want to hear that no it's over it's almost almost automatic he's been at all these games he said he's as nervous as anybody watching his old squad play this deep into the postseason for the first time since he was here better at third two gone for Gene Segura you know you're good yeah. when you got one of those. Phil's trying to take advantage of the leadoff double. Here it comes. Ball one. I mean, this is a huge two out hit. We saw some two out hits and runs scored by the Padres, but talking about that leadoff double by Harper, and if they don't come up with a run here, it kind of sucks the air out of that dugout. Even though there's plenty of you know chances to score runs, but those chances get minimized by some hard throwing studs that the Padres are going to continue to bring out of the pen. Here's the one on. Took it down oh. the middle, one on one. Yeah. 
Seven straight games with an extra base hit for Bryce Harper. Ties the National League record. Carlos Beltran did it as an Astro in 2004. What a view. One one pitch got a chase so after he takes a strike right down the middle he chases and he's behind one and two. Stay alive, getting a piece of that. Those are those quick hands from Segura. No issues now with the shadows, only right fielder still. One dealing with the sun. Well, he said enough. Harper a third, two gone, one two pitch from Nick Martinez. Fights it off, left side. Machado's got a hurry. He got him. And one Bills and Padres gear taking this one in during his bye week. Very nice. And my fantasy football quarterback. Oh, what a pick. Probably I'm the only one in the states that's got him. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're the only one in your league, and that's all that matters, big guy. Gunner Bragdon comes on to face Austin Nova. He takes ball one on a cross up. Rio Muto wasn't ready to catch that. Nola had a RBI hit. It's part of the five run fifth inning. Kuczewski, our stats guy, is telling us he's a diehard Bills fan. And the connection is that Trevor Hoffman married a former Bills cheerleader. Trevor's a big Bills fan. And so that is the relation Josh Allen to the Padres. There you have it. <laughs> One one pitch to Nola is fouled back one ball two strikes now Trevor's embarrassing all our all the former players that have retired because he looks like he could still play I mean look at that it's a joke you gotta get on him put on some weight make us feel better Trevor Trevor you should have seen John on the elliptical <laughs> yesterday though it was really impressive <laughs> Not quite as impressive as trying the treadmill today since the ellipticals were all taken. How's your body doing on that? Listen, I'm still buzzing over the ball that hit my drink and we can't find it in the booth. So my head's still spinning over that. And two and two. Nine, one and two for the Padres. Profar and Soto to follow. Brogdon throws, Nola fouls it off. But Connor Brogdon in his postseason debut in Atlanta really struggled, didn't quite look like himself. And Rob Thompson bumped into him. He said, how you doing? He said, to be honest with you, Skip, I was really nervous. And Rob said, I'm glad you told me that. I'm going to get you right back out there to get another chance on the big stage. And he was much better. He went one, two, three in the very next game. Well, he's known for that change up too. the one he just hung right there and he knew he hung it got to get that ball down but fastball separation between him and his change up maybe not quite like Martinez but tall lanky and the fastball gets on you and then he throws that change up and the hitter looks 
kind of foolish. But that is a great answer to a question when you ask the players when they get to the postseason. A lot of them are going to lie. That was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah just a little off. Now, if you're honest, you can get better. And I mean that. Like, even during the regular season, I would ask teammates, you know, hey, how you doing? What do you feel about this? And eventually, I would just say, stop telling me what you think I want to hear. Be honest, and then you have a chance to make an adjustment and get better. And in sports, you know, there's a lot of insecurity in sports because we all want to be heroes. We don't want to be goats. We don't want to give up runs in the big moment or strike out with the bases loaded. But those are the moments that pole vault you into being a better version of yourself if you allow it to happen. No one making him work. Eighth pitch coming up here. The 2 2 is lifted to left center field. Schwarber's angling back. He's got a beat on it. And Nola's the first out of the sixth. Today's telecast is sponsored by T Mobile. More 5G bars in more places. And by Royal Caribbean. This is one vacation to every adventure. Come seek. Enjoy the thrill of the postseason with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch-by-pitch -pitch coverage, and more on our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. See where they're at right now? The beach? No, here at the park. Wow. Jerickson profile. This guy's the first one that he sees. This place is awesome. Well, the fences were so deep when they first built this park. Yeah. I mean, you talk about pitchers, heaven. Well, they added certain areas to shorten the fences and still tough to drive it out of here. That's, see that wall back there behind the fence? That used to be where you had to hit it. Isn't that crazy? That oh, thing is great. so far <laughs> right. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Open in 2004 after... Spent their first 35 seasons sharing Jack Murphy Stadium with the Chargers. And they set an attendance record this year. Man, I love San Diego. Pitching in San Diego, you're guaranteed almost the same temperature every time you pitch, right? It, you, you can just guarantee that you're going to have good elements, no excuses, good grip on the ball. It comes down to your execution and whether you do well or not. And you got good golf on your days off. Tremendous. Yeah. Guaranteed. Like you're gonna play, right? One and two on Profar. Those low 90s when the game began. It's still warm, 86. Beautiful day to be over there. Better day to be here. Fights it off, foul. Yeah, most places you go, you know, being an avid golfer, the first thing you do is go to your app and check the weather. Sure. I don't think I've ever checked the weather. You just know. Just know. I know you've been checking it for Philly, and it's going to be nice. It's going to be beautiful. Very nice. Friday night, 66 the high. Saturday, 71. Sunny both those days. Don't look ahead to Sunday. That doesn't look as good so far. But we'll take the two nice days to start it. Game three on Friday night. The one two. Profar sends a change up down the line to left. Souvenir. Well, it's 7.30 Eastern, just about set to begin in Houston, the American League Championship Series. Astros are in the ALCS for a sixth consecutive year. Game two is tomorrow night on CBS, and then what we're talking about on Friday, game three of our series, starting at 6.30 Eastern on FS1. Can the Yankees keep riding the long ball? They hit below 200 in that series against the Guardians, but had nine home runs. Well, they're playing in a park that gives up a lot of home runs if you hit it for the right park. I mean, you want to keep it away from center. There, with that left. 
Oh, that left field porch is nice if you're a left handed hitter and you just hit a fly ball. And I gave one up over the train tracks. Not not fond of that, but. It's the anniversary of El Tuve's home run over that That's part right. of the park off the road as Chapman. Walk off last time the teams met. The ALCS 2019. We've talked about some of the rule changes coming in baseball. Connor Brogdon is the guy who's going to have to make an adjustment to the primary change, that pitch clock coming. Yep. Absolutely. Was it 18 seconds? So they're time. honing in the details on it. And it's different. Bases empty, men on. Fouled into the glove, two gone. So this is all coming to baseball next year. Can't wait. 15 seconds to the bases empty. 20 with runners aboard. Uh, got the shift restrictions. The bases are going to be larger, both adding the safety and maybe increasing the running game. A little bit. I, I think all of them are going to add significant changes to where you're going to see action a little bit more. And you're going to see crispness. Look, let's not forget throwing over to first. There's not an unlimited tank that you can go over there and throw the first too. Yeah, we get two pickoff throws and the third one you've got to be successful or the guy gets second. Base is empty, two gone on Soto. Strike oh. one from Brogdon. Soto tied the game with a double in that five run fifth. There's a change up from Brogdon and it's 0 2. Now the approach with Soto is different than universal approach of most of the hitters. That's what makes him unique. That's why he can work an 0 2 to a walk or he can put it in play more times than not. And that's the difference, I think, from the young younger player that he is, but with an old soul where he understands getting on base doing things to help your team win. Oh, wow, what a take. Kriamuto saying, nah, it was a strike. Yeah, they're always having those conversations yeah. where he's trying to reinforce his conviction of that ball being down, even if it may or may not have caught the strike zone. Subtle influences. Mm -hmm. I think he better swing if that next pitch is right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't tempt fate. One two pitch. Got him. He did swing and another change up from Brogdon. We are through with six innings in game two. Aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Every inning is a chance to discover new possibilities. Goodyear more driven. Back here at Petco Park. Seven straight runs for the Padres. They lead game two, seven four. Second in a vork for Nick Martinez. Eight nine one for the Phillies. This is Matt Veerling to lead off. And that's strike oh. one. It's been an amazing kind of two versions of this baseball game. Phillies riding high in the second inning. Looking like they were on their way to a 2-0 lead and just 7-0 run. Like you said, Padres come flying back. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night for Nick Martinez. Hitting Matt Veerling on three pitches. This, they call that Bugs Bunny. Mm. Change up, just never gets there. The 
Well, you lead by four runs. Got a 27 and 2 record in their postseason history. And, and you know what's hard about the narrative? Because we hear it all the time. There's so many statements are made in the postseason, like, hey, we just were looking to get a split and go back home, and all those different things. Our backs are against the wall. Da, 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 da. You're up four to nothing, and you've already got one in the bank. That's a tough one if they lose to lose when you're up four nothing thinking about going home two games to none in front of that raucous crowd that's going to be there in Philadelphia. So at the end of the day, whatever happens in this game, both teams are going to feel like they succeeded in their quest. Padres desperate to get this win. Phillies ah, would have been nice, but we got a split and a home field advantage. Bryson Stott will pinch it for Edmundo Sosa. He started games against right-handed pitchers. Sosa got the start today against Blake Snow. Oh. It's a strike on Stott. That's one of the key swings of this postseason for the Phillies. And Spencer Strider, game three of the division series, fouled off four pitches in a row, doubled the start a six-run inning for the Phillies. And an 0-2 hole very quickly here. David Robertson set to make his debut this postseason. Missed the first round. There are the division series when he injured his calf on Harper's home run in the wild card round. 0 2 pitch. Martinez looks like he's pitching out of the stretch. When nobody's on, this is technically his windup, and I saw the umpire go to him, and he had to declare with runners on, what would he doing? Is it a windup or the stretch? And this is the windup, constant movement, but then he's going to go back and forth and deliver the pitch in a windup fashion. Got him with a high fastball. That can't be easy on a hitter. No, and that's why I still like windups, however they are, right? Because you create movement, but with a runner on, he can't do that. And so he has to declare his stretch being the one he's going to go to. But what a job this bullpen has done so far in the postseason when they've got the lead. One run over the last almost 22 innings for the bullpen. And for Nick Martinez, after the leadoff double for Bryce Harper, he's retired five straight. Top of the order, Kyle Schwarber. For the monster game yesterday, he's 0 for 2 with a walk today. He just does a great job trying to honor. If you think a guy's swinging, throw him a changeup. If you think he's taking, throw it a fastball. It's that game the hitter's trying to figure out what's coming out of his hand, and you just can't differentiate the two when it comes out at the same release point. Struck out Veerling, struck out Stott. Goes a two and two on Schwarber. And this Phillies offense, the four runs in the second inning. They're one for 17 since. Still within striking distance, but the offense has gone quiet as this game has gone on. He goes to a 2 2 change up right here against Schwarber. Trying to keep the inning going for Hoskins. Here comes Martinez. It's a curve and it's chopped to Machado. But on man on the left side of the infield. That is the inning. Schwarber with a face plan as he goes by the bag. Nick Martinez retires six straight after the double for Padres lead as they try to even this series up.
They had a game apiece, send it back to Philly. We welcome you back inside here in San Diego, Joe Davis and the Hall of Famer John Smoltz. And it looked like the Phillies were on their way to a 2-0 series advantage. And the Padres, who have really struggled offensively, just exploded. Padres have something special, and I don't just mean that because of the way this game unfolded, but we've seen this before. Yeah. Dormant for a while, big inning, big rally, come out big, and that's what you got to do. You got to seize the moment, and Bob Melvin has kind of taken this team in a place of patience, but then boom, and looks like they got a chance to tie it up one to one. Part of the order coming up here. Manny Machado to lead things off, and it will be David Robertson. Veteran of 34 postseason games, and we mentioned it when he was warming up. Robertson pitched one game in the Cardinals series, but on Harper's home run in the second game of that series, he injured his calf celebrating in the bullpen, missed the division series, and it was bad enough where Rob Thompson was saying, I thought there was no chance we'd have him for this series. I thought that if we got to the World Series, probably wasn't even a chance then, but he healed way faster than they imagined. And now, to see what he's got with him. He didn't want to put him right into a high leverage spot, not knowing exactly what it was going to look like. Well, that's a big piece to pick up if he's able to get back to his form. It adds to what really has become a three-man bullpen of success for Rob Thompson, and this adds another piece. And trust me, if this thing goes seven and there's five in a row, Johnny Holstaff's going to have to pitch. <laughs> oh, and two on Machado. I know you can't plan for a series going seven, but I asked each manager about the uniqueness of the series because after today is the day off and then they're going to be challenged with a lot of patience and trust because there's no more days off bar barring weather. And that's the whole dance, right? You get into those five days. How hard do you go for it to win each individual game? How much of an eye do you keep on game six and seven? Right. Look at that it's different than a regular season. You're going to give, you're not going to give up on regular season games, but you're going to give up on certain pitchers in particular games. You have a formula for winning and a formula for when you're behind. In the postseason, there's no tomorrow for the most part. And so you're playing each game like a game seven. And you could do that when the old format of day off in between the third and six and seven. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And so two managers in their first seasons at the helm of these teams for Rob Thompson in his first season as a big league manager, period. He's had one year as a manager prior to this in a ball in 95. And he is loving the chess match within each game, the strategy through a series that we're discussing. The longtime bench coach. 59 years old from Canada. He spent his entire life in this game. He spent 37 years in pro baseball. Started as a catcher and a third baseman in the Tigers minor league system. Pretty quickly pivoted into coaching and player development. And thought that his chance had come and gone. He had a great baseball career. Wasn't probably going to be a big league manager. And he was at peace with that. Then his good friend Joe Girardi gets off to the rough start this year. Gets fired on June 3rd. Rob Thompson takes over. Not only did he steady the ship, he led him to the postseason for the first time in 11 years and was granted a two-year contract to be the guy. Interim tag removed. Now they're 0-2 to Machado. Ball one. And you know, he's probably secretly uh, adopting the Cheers theme song where everybody knows your name. He said, nobody knew my name until this year. Nobody ever came up to me. And so with the success in Philly and certainly the atmosphere, a lot of people know his name. He was at the Flyers game last weekend. He said every single person that walked by, first of all, a lot of them had Philly stuff on. And every one of them said, go get him, Skip. Rob, go get him. Go get him, Topper. A nickname that he earned when he was with the Yankees because he was always on top of everything. Legendary work ethic, legendary attention to detail. For the man they call Topper. The right touch, the right temperament has brought a sense of calm and has induced confidence in his club. Machado lifts the ball to left center field. Way back there, goodbye. Home run, Manny Machado. 8-4 San Diego.
Third of the postseason for Machado. Third of the day for the Padres. And no hits between the two superstars yesterday in a well-pitched game by Wheeler. Three hits today by Machado and Soto. Two doubles and a home run. Breathing room. You know, we were talking about Rob Thompson on the other side. Perfect timing for Bob Melvin, too, to settle the ship. Some distractions with Tatis, the superstar that wasn't going to play for the rest of the season. And, you know, you could sense a calm about this team. Strike on Cronenworth. It really is a perfect scenario for two guys to come into an organization and lead their teams now a really chance to go to the World Series. Similar steady personalities, but completely different track records where this is the first chance for Thompson. For Bob Melvin, he's in his 19th year as a major league manager. Yeah, and he's in a different place, though, as a manager, whereas in Oakland, it was always looked upon as, look what we're doing here, it's amazing, but they hadn't won a playoff series, right? Now he comes with the expectation of a, of a roster that's much different and a trade that put him in a position to be in this part, and so I'm sure he would like nothing more than to answer that question about winning a postseason series with a new team here in San Diego. Starters managerial career in Seattle and Arizona. Last 11 years with the A's. Cronenworth tries to lay off and does. Manager of the year three times. And the big difference is the payroll difference, right? I mean, just not even in the same atmosphere when you're dealing with a roster and making the most he can out of the roster he did with the Oakland A's. Nobody probably did it better with the exception of the Rays in Tampa. So, I mean, shoot. I'm sure he's going to enjoy it. Ground ball right side. Diving stop by Segura, but that only delays the inevitable. It's a base hit for Cronenworth. And we look back at Machado's leadoff shot. Well, a lot of cutters from... And you can see, I mean, the, the, I was just going to say, the cutter is an absolute recipe for a monster blast. It has the perfect speed if it's thrown incorrectly, and Robertson throws a lot of spinning, breaking balls slash cutters. Schwarber didn't move much. He knew as soon as the ball was hit off the bat. See how that ball stayed in the zone? Shot it looked like that hurt to look on that nah, it was like nasty look. Yeah. Look at this. Right. You see that? Look at me. Jury takes oh. a strike. Three home run hitters in this game for the Padres. In addition to Machado, this guy here in Jury and Josh Bell went back to back on back to back pitches. The beginning of this eight run rally. Two in the second, five in the fifth, one more here in the seventh. This is the first National League Championship Series game ever where both teams held a four-run lead. <laughs> this is the first League Championship Series ever between two teams that finished with below 90 wins. Drury on the line to deep left field. Schwarber to the corner. He's got it. Back to first goes Cronenworth. They crashed the party, taking down two division champions in the case of the Phillies. Two 100-win teams in the case of the Padres. And it appears they're going to be headed to Philly. Locked 1-1. One, one. Our player resume is sponsored by Indeed as Josh Bell comes to the plate. We take a look at several players that were picked up at the deadline. A.J. Preller pushing the chips in, going for it, getting Soto and Bell in one deal, getting Drury in a much more uh, under-the-radar deal, but an impactful one as well. That was on August 2nd. The Padres really didn't take off from that point forward. There was still about a 500 team. But the whole thing was done with an eye on this time. An eye on taking down the Dodgers, making a run in the postseason. young Padres that they were known with the tremendous talent some of those chips were cashed in for some veteran guys to get to this point as you mentioned and that veteran pitching staff is a big part of it it's almost been a complete game really for the Padres offense we're worried about what they were going to do and when they were going to show up swinging bunt left side base hit Josh Bell 
Speaking of a complete performance, three home runs, three for six in runners in scoring position, three two out RBI, six two out or two strike hits, and everyone but Grisham has a hit. So they've the long clock went off. Third hit of the day for Josh Bell. Came in over his last 14. Today's telecast is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. A grand slam for your budget. It's a funny game, baseball. It is. <laughs> Coming up right after this funny game of baseball here on Fox, except on the West Coast, it's an all-new episode of the hit show, The Masked Singer. Viewers out west will see The Masked Singer at its normal time today. Hey, by the way, speaking of uh, Hall of Famers, Goose Gossage, I wonder how he's feeling about the Goose mascot that has been adopted here uh, in San Diego. Gal Gibson, Morgan. maybe they can get Goose to come out here and throw out a ceremonial first pitch for one of the last couple of games. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> Hassan Kim, first base here to this series, started that five-run rally in the fifth. Cronenworth at second. He's got Bell at first, and he takes the ball. They love him here. Tuna, one of the most hyped position players ever from the KBO. The most hype since Jung Ho Gong, who never came to the Pirates and got off to a good start. The biggest name would be Shin Su Chin, but he went straight to the United States from high school in Korea. He didn't play in the KBO like Kim did for seven years. Off the end of the bat on the right side of the infield. This is an infield fly rule. And let's catch for Hoskins. <laughs> Two gone in the seventh, and a quick word from Mattress Firm. Junk sleep slow in your game? Let the sleep experts find the perfect mattress for you. It's going to do it for David Robertson in his first game back. 23 pitches, gives up the Machado home run, and the runners at first and second on his line as well. Four, or scored eight straight. And they've got him in first and second. Trent Grisham coming to the plate against Kyle Gibson. Well, I know Rob Thompson would prefer to not have this scenario, but he's getting, given an opportunity to get some guys into the postseason because he's going to need some of these guys in the latter part of this series. So Kyle Gibson gets in. We saw Robertson get his feet back in after the injury. So look for Rob Thompson to utilize guys if this score stays the way it is to at least touch the playoffs and get that out of the way. Trent Grisham trying to join the hit party. You mentioned he's the only guy without one. He made two outs. Somebody. Is that right? He made two outs in the five-run inning. Well, if you're doing that, you don't feel good about the two outs, but you know your team scored a lot of runs. Right. That is just foul. Well, Kyle Gibson, obviously a starter, has five pitch mix. He spreads it around pretty, pretty good. He'll throw his cutter probably the highest percentage of all the five pitches. Fastball, the four seam, the sinker, the slider, curveball, and changeup. Pitching for the first time since October 1st here. Oh, Gibson a year ago in Texas had a 287 ERA and was one of the big deadline pickups But since coming to the Phillies his ERA north of five Coded a 973 over the last month this year His 2-1 to Grisham Good one oh. two and two. Well, he's not gonna be a high strikeout guy for the most part He's gonna try to change speeds like that and Cut a ball here, sink a ball there, and keep it off the barrel of the bat as a starting pitcher. And come down the stretch, it probably will be some decision making for games four for Rob Thompson.
from the Ranger Suarez for the third game. Noah Syndergaard got the fourth game in the division series, and it was essentially a bullpen game as he went three and pitched well. He did pitch well, and those game fours, the difference was the Phillies won't have a guy they can depend on as long, per se, whereas the Padres, more than likely Clevenger, will be able to, at least in theory, provide more innings because he's been that starter for the Padres. Grisham down swinging, that sends this game to the eighth inning, but the inning started with a Manny Machado home run. Third of the day for the Padres, third of the postseason for the man that's carried him for much of this magical summer in San Diego. We got a real problem. Reese Hoskins first pitch from Robert Suarez unloads an ambush home run. Robert Suarez had not allowed a run in this ballpark all year. Hoskins was ready for the first thing that he served, and it's an 8-5 game. That was a right-handed wow to the left-handed Schwarber. An absolute crushed it. And the Phillies saying we're not finished yet. They get their first run since the second inning, just their second hit since then. And the second home run for Hoskins this postseason. All right. Robert Suarez, untouchable so far this postseason. Gets drilled right there. It's a strike on Real Muto. Yeah, he's been awesome. And, you know, that's just a little bit of a shock to your system right there. You go in, throw a first pitch fastball, and you're like, whoop. All right, back to business. Three run lead. Suarez, 31 years old. A rookie. 31 year old rookie who grew up in Venezuela. He played baseball and was a good player, but never a big pro prospect or anything. Baseball is more of a hobby for him. And that went into his early 20s. His only pitching was on the weekends and amateur games. During the week, he worked in construction, worked as a security guard at a supermarket, but still enjoyed playing the game. Slow and it's one and two on Real Muto. He had a friend who was playing in the Mexican League who came home to Venezuela and he said, Hey, like what you're doing looks pretty good. I bet I can get you a chance in Mexico if you want to give this thing a shot as a full time gig. He said, All right, let me save up some more money. Keeps working at the supermarket, keeps working construction, heads to Mexico and gets paid to play for the first time at the age of 24. It's a base hit the other way for JT Real Muto. That leads to an opportunity in Japan. And five years later, he gets a two-year offer from the Padres and has emerged as one of the most deadly arms in the postseason out of the bullpen. There is that path from not even thinking pro baseball was a possibility, bouncing all over the globe to get this chance. Well, he's got himself in a little bit of a pickle here he's gonna have to be really really good to Bryce Harper on the first pitch we know how aggressive he can be and from not giving up a run at all this year to now trying to hold a three run lead Harper two more hits today an extra base in seven consecutive games a home run in three straight and he misses downstairs ball one So Nola heads out there to visit with Suarez. And for those of you expecting to see an all-new The Masked Singer, it'll start as soon as our game ends. Roller coaster in this game. There's four nothing fills. Eight straight for the Padres. Phillies are the kind of offense we saw this throughout the regular season. We've seen it in this postseason, boom or bust. They can go stretches where nothing happens, like the middle innings of this game. And then, bang, it can happen like this. Yeah, this was quick. See how he gets the leg down, hands on top of the ball on the top of the zone, gets it quick there, and the ball disappears quick. They're both home runs for Hoskins in this postseason have come first pitch. No doubters to left. I mean, nothing but solos in the home run department. Someone's going to make somebody pay with a two or three run homer. But the pitchers have done a job with the bases 
occupied, not giving up that big one. But he said more home runs this postseason than Bryce Harper, who had a center cut fastball and came up empty. Homer for Hoskins, single for Real Muto. Now Bryce Harper. A ball and one strike against Suarez. Swing and a miss again, and it's one and two. All right, those were the swings where he's looking to pull the ball. Let's see if Harper makes an adjustment. This is a nasty fastball away. See how his front side opens up, trying to get to that ball before he gets to the glove. Suarez deals. Harper takes ball two. Great idea when you throw the ball up there. Again, small window for success as far as where it's enticing for the hitter to hit. But Harper doesn't hit that ball above the belt very well when he goes off of it, after it. So good try there. Make your best pitch here, two and two. Here it comes. Harper bounces one the other way. Machado gets in front of it. The second one on the first. What a double play! I know we got some great third basemen in the league, and there's no doubt about it, but this is one of the best ever right here. Machado's hands, his footwork, his throws to the on the money every time. That is an improbable double play based on the shift. And Harper getting down the line. But look how good his feet are. I mean, his hands and everything he does. That broken bat little infield ball with two outs he made look relatively easy and he made that play which had a high I mean that he just made it look like it was nothing baseball beauty Manny Machado playing third base Hassan Kim establishing himself as one of the best glove men up the middle both with good arms spot on throws a turn two so much fun watching that guy play. We've got some of the best stars in the game in this series. No balls, one strike on Nick Castellanos, who's one for three today. Pitcher's best friend helping out Robert Suarez. But let's go over to one. Strike two. Oh. This guy's effortless. I mean, when you know, we've documented how good he is, he's not missing the target like a foot, like some guys do that try to throw it as hard as they can. He's pretty much online with where he's trying to throw it. And just this calm, easy delivery, but 99 on the other end. And just like that, the inning ends. Lead-off shot from Reese Hoskins, and then a single, but a double play and a strikeout in an 8-5 game. Yesterday, 13 runs on 20 hits today. Predict which players have stacked the most total bases each day during the postseason. Compete to win 50 grand with MLB base chase. Strike one on Austin Nola. Had an RBI hit against his brother. It's one for three total. Ball to short for Brayson Stott. One gone in the eighth, and we check in with Kenny. Well, Joe, I'm sort of wondering how Thanksgiving and Christmas at the NOLA home in Baton Rouge is going to go this year. If you remember, the first time they met in August 2021, Aaron struck out Austin, and that Christmas, we gave him the strikeout ball as a gift. Now, this year, they met again in June, and Austin hit a single off Aaron to produce the Padres' only run in a 1-0 victory, and Austin said then he is planning a revenge gift that he would present at Thanksgiving or Christmas. Now, guys, here's my question. Today's hit gives you even more fodder if you're Austin Ola, but is it just too sensitive because it came in the NLCS. Spread it out. One of them for Christmas, one of them for birthday. It only matters, it, it only matters what team goes forward. So okay. if 
the Padres go forward, you got to deliver the ball. You do. I thought you were going to say the other way around, like you can't rub it in. I'm going to see what he's down. <laughs> Profar pulls the foul one on one. But I mean, it's the ultimate bragging right. Could make a nice little uh, two balls on one plaque. Yeah, you know, put it in, put it on the shelf. Be nice to get creative with it. So a two-game hitting streak against his brother. He does sign him for him. You know, it happens a lot in the game with former teammates. When you're playing with them, you always tell them, ah, this is what I would do to you if, I, if you ever got traded. You talk your trash, you know, and never thinking it's going to happen. Then when it happens. You better deliver. <laughs> yeah. You better face your former teammate. Especially when you played with him for a long time. Do you have any that came back and tormented you? Yeah. You know, Maddox yesterday called me bald and crazy when I made that uh, <laughs> proclamation of a complete game that I know is never going to happen. But he got a base hit off me when uh, I faced him. Actually, when he was a Padre. Oh! And the camera caught him, you know, asking for the ball. Well, everyone thought that I was tipping, you know, like when I took my hat off and bowed down to Greg, it was, you know, everyone thought, well, that's the ultimate respect. It's like, no, I was showing him my bald head that he's infatuated. Oh. And then he proceeded to get a hit the next pitch, so it didn't work. Good try, though. I like where that was at. <laughs> oh, man. Hater gets ready. And he does look like Josh Hader of old. Three and two on Jerickson Profar. One gone in this eighth inning. By the way, can I can I tell you something wild as we get a walk after yeah. you get a chance to read your moment here. Yeah, let me do the T-Mobile thing and then you can tell me whatever you want. For every home run hit this postseason, T-Mobile is donating five grand to Team Rubicon's hurricane recovery efforts. And when you text relief to 595959, T-Mobile will donate another five dollars. Well, we are in San Diego. We were talking about Maddox and, and the most amazing thing in the world is that we, the three of us, Glavin, Maddox, myself, face the great Tony Gwynn a million times. Okay, so we we faced him. You want to know what the numbers were? I, I think it's yeah, it's check crazy, it out, right? When they when they show this graphic, you're gonna have to hit pause and record your TV because you're not gonna believe it when you see it. Soto takes the ball. So here you have it. I'm leading the way at 462, and this is a small sample size, but what that doesn't tell you is we only struck him out three times. Unreal. Three. Tony Gwynn only had one three strikeout game his whole career. Two and on Soto. Tony Gwynn was a career 338 hitter. No other Padre has ever hit 338 in a single season. It's just incredible. I heard some phenomenal, like, 0 for 3,000. He could go and still be a career 300. Some crazy <laughs> number. To put it in perspective. Yeah. And his son, Tony Glenn Jr., played for both these franchises, is now the radio analyst for the Padres. And he's got his dad's oh. smile. He's got his dad's laugh. Oh, yeah. It was the ultimate challenge. Greatest hitter of our generation left us way too soon, unfortunately. But gentle smile, laugh, giggle when he knows he's got you. I got it. Got so bad, I threw him a knuckleball, and he just laughed at me. <laughs> Took it and laughed at me. The Juan Soto's got a little Tony Gwynn in him, and the you know the playfulness and yeah. the bat-to-ball ability, the stubbornness in the strike zone. And Soto and Machado, we were talking about those guys needing to get going for the Padres, an offense that had scored in just one of their last 21 innings before today. Soto tied the game with an RBI double. Machado's got a double and a homer.
And a lot of help from their buddies around. Here's a shot down the line. Foul. Well, I, I know it's just an individual game, an individual storyline, but you don't want to get the stars going, right? You want to keep them down as long as possible. And we talked about, you know, facing these two great players. You got to face them when there's not traffic on the bases. And when traffic got on the bases, they've done some some really good things today. And it charges up that that offense. It gets everybody energy when the two stars get connected. Kyle Gibson to Juan Soto with the 2-2 pitch. Bouncing ball to first, backhand Hoskins. They'll go to second for one. Back to first, wide throw. Two gone, and Soto aboard in the fielder's choice. Now, this would have been an impossible double play. You're asking the first base, uh, the pitcher to get over and act like a first baseman on the move after the throw's been thrown to second. I think Stotts is talking about the slide and where he came in on his throw to the umpire. Let's watch where the slide comes in. Hard hit ball. Go to first base. Now there's the pitcher's end on how, how hard that is, but we're going to get a chance to look at the slide. See where he comes in on the slide or actually standing straight up, and that's what Stotts was complaining about. He didn't slide. Hmm. Two out and another AB for Machado. Crushed a home run his last time. He takes upstairs for ball one. This looks like it's headed for some kind of series. Speaking of Tony Gwynn, Manny Machado has tied him with eight extra base hits in his Padres postseason career. Had a great scene here at Petco Park. Going to be the same as Citizens Bank Park this weekend with games three through five, Friday through Sunday. We've got two fan bases who've waited a long time for their teams to be in this spot. Yeah, they're starving. And it's going to be loud. There's a 1 1 pitch from Gibson. Phillies are in the National League Championship Series for the first time since they made three straight trips in the glory days with Utley and Howard and Rollins and those great pitching staffs 2008 through 2010. Rob Thompson was on the other side, a part of that with the Yankees. Padres are here for the first time since the days of Kevin Brown as the ace and Trevor Hoffman, who we were talking about earlier. Tony Gwynn towards the back end of his career, 1998. Baltimore chop left side from the former Baltimore Oriole. And an infield hit for Manny Machado, his third knock of the day. Yeah, there was no chance there. Do or die play, and the ball stays down after the big hop, hits the grass, and just kind of poop. Under the glove. Stock doing a nice job backing up. Getting kept alive for Jake Cronenworth. As a hit, he got hit by a pitch and scored a run. These Padres have eight runs on 13 hits after no runs on one hit yesterday. In on him, rolled back to Gibson. Cuts it off, shovels on to first. Sends this game to the ninth inning. Josh Hader coming on, trying to lock down a win to even the series up at a game apiece. Dot com, authentic on field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Josh Hader came over at the deadline from Milwaukee, has figured it out here down the stretch. No runs over his last 14 games back to the end of the regular season. Yeah, he's almost struck out half the batters he's faced. Seven out of 15 in the postseason. No run runs, one hit. 
Well, that includes Betts Turner and Freeman in the ninth inning of game four on Saturday. That's ball one on Alec Baum. And we say that he figured it out because midseason, Josh Hader lost it. And it was against these Phillies that that began. June 7th, he entered the game against the Phillies with a major league record 40 consecutive scoreless appearance stretch. And Alec Bohm, who's at the plate here, and Matt Veerling, who bats third, both homered against him. Beginning with that, Hader gave up 28 runs over the next 21 innings. So the Phillies is actually broken that day and trying to do the same here. Well, the hardest part when you're facing this guy is to stay off the high fastball. And you see the first seven versus the last 18, and he throws a lot of high fastballs. He's got an invisible slider that they they miss about 55% of the time. you got to make him throw strikes, but it's hard to do that when he throws that hard and you're ready to hit. Ball two on Bohm. So if I'm the Phillies in this game, even if we don't, if they don't, even if they don't come back, see as many pitches as you can, you can against a guy that you're going to see more than likely more than once in this postseason. Segura and Veerling to follow Bohm in this ninth inning. On a 2-1 pitch. Bohm watches oh. Jarvis outside corner strike two. Will Myers, by the way, into the game defensively at first. Placing Brandon Drury. Upgrade in the defense over there a touch. 2-2. Two -two. One go. 100. I'm just telling you, hard to do. You tell yourself, get the ball down. The fastball up looks so good to hitters, but they can't catch up to this 100 mile an hour fastball above the belt. Boom, way late. I mean, it's the old adage, right? Could he throw? With the threat of you swinging, knowing that you would never swing, can a guy throw three strikes before you swing the bat? Uh, I know that's not going to happen, but you've got to make him in the strike zone as much as possible if you're going to have any chance. I mean, he's one of the elite arms in our game. And he's like you're talking about so hard to pick up, so no matter what the fastball velocity is, it's tough. You combine it with the stuff that breaks. And now he's throwing harder than ever. Prior to this postseason, he had never touched 100. That's the seventh pitch that he's thrown at 100 miles per hour or above in this postseason. His 0-2 pitch. I don't know if he called it on the swing or the, the pitch. Looks like we called it obviously on the pitch. They waited around for a while for something to really get excited about in these two games. After they were shut out yesterday and found an early hole today. Strike one on Matt Veerling. Those back-to-back -back home runs woke them all up. Woke the Padres up. Drury and Bell in the second inning started a stretch of eight straight runs the Padres win. Yeah, it gave them hope, right? Down 4 nothing against a really good pitcher who hadn't given up a run in forever and kind of shocked to the system. You're only down two and Blake Snell did the rest. Kept it right there. And then the fifth inning Oh, fifth inning, a five spot in the fifth inning. Usually turns out well for a club. Haters 0 1. Straight two. This man is a problem. Sore shoulders for the fans. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and those babies whipping. <laughs> they got a day to rest them. That's they true. Get a few that before the series true. comes back around. Josh Hader trying to strike out the side. In game two, one ball, two strikes. Towel 
was waving at the bank on Friday. Hader fires one two. Pop up. Myers. <laughs> off his glove. Right off the end of his glove. Great stretch over there to make it close. Mm. What a way that would have been to finish this one off. Maybe thought that he caught it. Says, all right. And eh, let me try and strike out the side. Yeah, I prefer that anyways. Out of the one two pitch. This series is tied in a game of peace. Phillies take game one, two nothing. The Padres bounce back in ridiculous fashion. They score eight runs after they get shut out on one hit. Eight runs on 13 hits and an 8 5 win in game two. Well, that says a lot about what you need to know about San Diego and the resiliency and things aren't going their way and looked like they were probably going to have another tough game with a great pitcher on the mound. Well, they came back and they came back against the Dodgers and they've got a series now and they got a pretty darn good pitcher going in game three and Mr. Musgrove. Boys, it's going to be a fun series. Are they ready to go to Philly? Ready to go. Let's do it from one excellent atmosphere to another as these teams have the off day tomorrow and then play game three on Friday night.